Hey, so I, I, I officially think that I am fat. Really? <laughs> well, the only reason I say that is because I was I stepped on the scale and I'm effortlessly sit like effortlessly stuck at like two ninety two. Uh-huh. And I'm like, damn, dude, like that's effortlessly being two hundred and ninety pounds. Like you gotta be a fat fuck to effortlessly be two hundred and ninety pounds. <laughs> <laughs> But like, are, are your calories high right now, or not really? They're not that high. Um, so my plan's supposed to be like forty six hundred calories. I'm uh-huh. probably eating around five. <laughs> you oh, know? A... What's up, Sid? Yo, yo, oh, we got new people. Can you can you, okay. can you hear What's us? Going on? Yeah, can oh, you hear me? Got... Yeah, there we What's go. What's up, Sid? Yo, what is Pretty up, good, brother? This Boy, that was, that was... <laughs> that, that voice, man. Like, <laughs> what I want to know that at what age did you wake up and you 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 spoke and your voice just resonated the whole fucking house? Poverty. <laughs> I mean, a puberty. Puberty. <laughs> puberty. <laughs> like losing my mind. We just like the second time. Exactly. As soon as I got four, puberty. I puberty. <laughs> puberty. Puberty. Like, there you go. I got to get my puberty right. No. So I remember, like, I was like thirteen years old, whatever, like that, and like. It came to the point where I'm picking up the phone. Somebody called the house phone. I pick it up, and they would think it was my dad, you know, and that kind yeah. of thing. And all of a sudden, it's like my dad has a fairly deep voice. And all of a sudden, it's like you know, uh, no, I'm not my dad. And then eventually, it was like it wasn't until like literally after co- grad school. Grad school was like, oh wait, you know, there's a radio station here. Maybe let's try it out, whatever like that. And literally, 15 years later, you know, here we are. So that's I think I, I think Sid <laughs> got the got the best voice in the sport. Like like effortlessly, right? Because because Bob Bob has to kind of put it on, right? Bob Bob kind of he got to go in that Bob mode and hey, you know. But Sid, he literally just talks like that. He talks in, in the Sid voice. <laughs> uh, you, on, you on know, yo, you, if you guys check out this video that Dave did um about a week ago or so, right? It's like Dave at a spa, right? The mm-hmm. the thumbnail is like this woman like working on Dave's face or whatever. The mm-hmm. owner of that spa, it's like he's in he's in the bodybuilding world too. His name is uh, James Minoyan. If you hear his voice and the way he speaks, forget Bob and I. This guy has <laughs> the most unique, best voice I've ever heard. I mean, ever. It, it, it's not enough. Forget bodybuilding. It was just like, you're listening. You're like, how? how is this not like AI generated? You know what I mean? Like, it was yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> but, my, yeah. my, my biggest dream, bro, even, even bigger than bodybuilding, I wish I could sing, bro. I, I always wish I, I had a That's singing funny. voice. Like like yeah. Sid, Sid to me sounds like somebody who, who could sing. Can you sing? I used to. No, no, I See? used to. So so the funny part is, um, so I'm, I'm Pakistani, right? So like, mm-hmm. but I was raised here. I was born and raised here. But um, you know, I grew up listening to, to to Pakistani music, and I mean, it's similar similar to Indian music if you if you listen to that, whatever. So I kind of like you know taught myself how to sing in that style, I guess. So in a way, so I mean, I don't know if you know this, but like I do PA announcing. That's sort of like my main thing i guess mm-hmm. in a way the singing background has kind of assisted in that as well you know what i mean like somebody hits a three-pointer it's like you're kind of singing somebody's hit a three-pointer you're not saying three-pointer you know what i yeah. mean like but, <laughs> by the way how do you pronounce your name i, I don't want to mess that up it, it is Beatty. is Beatty. Beatty. okay Beatty. yeah but i mean because my handle that my handle is body right so right some people say body some people say Beatty. um so yeah people so in west Af- yeah, but baby, you know. Yeah, but yeah, in yeah. uh, I, I I don't know if you're aware, but in West African culture, sure, a lot of us grow up watching like Bollywood movies, right? So we're we're familiar. I, I'm with, aware. Like, I'm aware. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're for, we're familiar with like all the actors like Shah Rukh Khan and Salman yep. Khan and all the and you know, it's kind of it's not bring it up. Everybody's like, oh, how, how do you know those guys? Like I'm like. It's it's hard to explain, but I don't know for yeah. whatever reason. No, no, no. It's it's kind of a regional thing, and then it kind of permeated West Africa, permeated the Middle East, and now if you go to like parts of London, parts of Europe rather, you yeah, London right, being yeah. the stronghold. Parts of Europe where literally you tune into like any you know prime time channel seven to nine p.m. There's a Bollywood movie on. It's crazy. It's big, but I, I don't really watch them anymore. But yeah, grew up like watching yeah, I mean, them whatever as a kid. So <laughs> I haven't watched those in, in some time. Hey, Stu, what's up, Stu? We talk Peace Bollywood. Stu. Yo. Yeah, we, we talk about it. Stu, <laughs> and Stu is really well versed on on everything, right? Stu is one of those people he knows a little bit about everything, right? And a lot about bodybuilding, but you know yeah. that, that's where me and Stu are similar. We we like to know, you know, a little bit about everything. I don't know much about Bollywood, but all I know <laughs> about that is 
Uh, you know, Geo said, said, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, looks, I knew that's where you're gonna go with this, <laughs> bro. He's <laughs> he is fucking obsessed with Bollywood, and he looks damn near identical to one of the really famous yeah um, actors oh out God. there. I, his name's Hrithik or something. No, oh, we think, yeah, we think Roshan, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, no, not not Hrithik Roshan. No, I know who you're talking about. The guy who is in Slumdog Millionaire. Him, Anil Kapoor. Anil Kapoor. Oh yeah, yeah. that's I, the I, one. I know that guy. Yeah. A yeah. Bollywood movie I've actually seen because it was like I don't know white people watched it was a big deep deal over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking about a, a ridiculous movie, bro, though. like it was a good movie. Huh? Yo, some of those guys got crazy physiques, man. Have Have you seen some of those th- th- these physique transformations they do? Like uh, well, uh Rithik, yeah. Rithik Roshan got a crazy physique. Yeah, and uh, Salman Khan. That's that's like the guy who yeah. he's the one that like all of a sudden when he started lifting weights, all of a sudden like. All of India awakened to the fact that, like, oh my God, if you lift weights, you might look like that. <laughs> that kind of a thing, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> let me try to pull that up. The, what's his Instagram? It, it'll be Salman Khan. But yeah. I mean, he's kind of old. He's kind of old now, though. <laughs> he is, but like, can you, you have to imagine how much work he's had done on him to look young, to stay young, kind of a deal. Yeah, yeah, for That's sure. Not like uh, sixty-nine million followers. Mike Mike O'Hearn style. This is like a uh, Bollywood Mike O'Hearn. You, got- <laughs> you you've you've um, you've met michael hearn in person right yeah yeah at, yeah at like when you go up to him yeah like michael hearn has got that kind of a thing where like if you ever meet like a prominent newscaster or someone like that like you could tell by their face there's yeah, stuff sure. that's been done you know, it's, it's too it's shiny like, it's too perfect it's like the uncanny <laughs> valley you know you know that you, you don't got <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he doesn't have any like he doesn't take his shirt off these days. I assume because if no, this was no, 20- no. he used to, he used yeah. to like any music video, you just have his shirt all with like a guitar, you know, and like. Well, uh, look at his back at sixty years old. That's not bad. That's not He's a bad 60? back. Sixty? What? I I don't know how old he is. <laughs> All I know is he he's pretty grown though. At least right about how old is he? Sid? He's got him. He's said? got to be in his. I mean, think about it this way. So when I was, you know pre-teen into my teens a lot of people used to call they used to say that i look like him the facially or whatever the case be uh so i used to get that a lot so this is when he was well in his like 40s imagine so, exactly like, fast forward what are we talking about 30 years yeah he's got to be pushing he, bro he looks great he looks better than, than mike o'hearn actually right no but dude yeah, but you <laughs> have that bollywood money that he's made yeah. dude, you know how much work he's gotten done like for sure. Look up how this is good right here. This, this is this is solid physique. Fifty eight. Oh, 58, yeah. So he, uh, I mean, this is solid at fifty eight. I think I think Michael Horn is oh, like uh, fifty five. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah, respect, man. I mean, the guy's obviously put in the work. It's not you can't fake that. You know what I mean? Facially, mm-hmm. yeah, you get stuff done, but like physique wise, you got to put in the work. I mean, you can't just you know. I mean, yeah. I haven't seen his face moving, but like it doesn't look <laughs> fucked up, you know. Some people no. like you know, just you just tell like, oh, there's shit shot in everywhere, you know. But he <laughs> might have that newscaster thing, like you were saying, where you know, like they got so much Botox in them that right moves anymore, it's like they plastic, can't express yeah. themselves. Yeah, that that Bollywood money is is different, man. No, but, that's. Um, I mean, do he, he, you got you got an entire you got a, you have a country of over a billion people, and I say this like you know, not even half tongue in cheek, like literally worshiping you kind of a deal. You know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah. Would you would you guys get work done on your face if you get when you get to the age? Fuck no. If you have the money. No. No. You no. wouldn't? No. no. I mean it's like I, I wouldn't want to, right? But it's like getting old is tough too, man. It it depends. Like like whatever I'm I'm gonna go to Jay Color like Jay Color, what whatever you did Tell me, because Jay Cutler doesn't look like he had work done. No, but but he might have. I mean, maybe like Botox. I don't know. But whatever Jay is doing, that's what I want to do. I don't want it overdone. But I mean, if I could look younger without without looking creepy, listen, man, <laughs> it always starts like that. It's a slippery slope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always thought it was kind of gay. <laughs> <laughs> listen, it's, we're we're it's really gay, though. actually. Like, yeah, so I was like, nah, I heard about that. I don't know, just That's being that obsessed with your, your appearance is, like, very feminine, I think. Listen, man, we're, we're, we're literally bodybuilders. We're all, we're all hey, obsessed yeah, with oh, like, we're, Yeah, we're bodybuilders. <laughs> we're trying to win shows, dude. This is competition. 
Yeah, yeah, kill true. everybody in that shit. I'm like, it's not vain when you're trying to win. <laughs> <laughs> like, you say that, but it, uh, uh-huh. let's go back to the newscaster example, right? Like, you know, it's like a nuclear arms race, right? I mean, like, you have like, say you're in your 50s or whatever. There is that, you know, next up and coming young, young looking 30 year old news anchor that could take your job. So in a way, yeah. you have to get stuff done. Like Salman Khan, I'm sorry, without without God knows whatever he's gotten done, what do you think he's going to just age, age gracefully into 60? No, of course yeah. he's going to look a little old. Okay, so if your you job, have to do that, your right. career requires that. Yeah, right. Fine, yeah, yeah. right? They judge me from the neck down. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> that oh, yeah. is why I'm in bodybuilding. You know, I'd be in board shorts if I were pretty, <laughs> you know? I feel, I feel like as men, oh. we're, we're like, we're hard on ourselves when it comes to like enhancing our, our our looks, right? Like facially, right? I don't think it's nothing wrong with taking care of your face in that way. I think there's a limit. I think there's because I live in West Hollywood. Some of these people cross the line, like really, really, <laughs> really far, right? You know, but like you know, to like I, I think Botox is fine. Like why, why, why not? You know, cancel some wrinkles here and there. Why not get you know go to Turkey, get your hair done? If it makes you feel good, bro, I, I'm I'm all for it. Even if it's a, a little bit gay, you know, what I'm saying it's okay. It's okay to be a little uh, a little bit. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. it, it, it gotta it gotta look. I, I think like what's dudes getting? Out, it, it, you still want to look like a, a man. You don't want to look like some kind of creature. You know, so like it's a slippery slope. You know, I'll say hair transplant, a one, a little Botox if if you just wrinkle really easily because some people are like thirty and they're starting to look fifty. You know, oh, I'm twenty seven and I got like crazy crow's feet. <laughs> like I I don't give a shit though. Like I'm the that's, same. That's not why people <laughs> like me. If they no, like yeah, me. that's true. You know? <laughs> that's true. You're also twenty five. You you might start getting nervous when you hit like thirty five. Twenty seven, sir. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, old man Don't here. Don't infantilize me. <laughs> v- veteran stew. But, I'm uh, white. I'm not gonna age good. I'm already aging <laughs> bad. <laughs> Joe, 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 look. You look good though, Joe. You 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 look uh you look I, a little I younger. I got a ton of wrinkles and shit here on my fucking whatever this is. Yeah, good. <laughs> You're supposed to. That's what happens. That, that's from that's from hard lifting and heavy yeah. shit. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of good looks, uh, what's up, uh, Carlos? Look at this. <laughs> Carlos That's looks not. like he'd be, he'd be twenty or something. I Carlos looks twenty one. <laughs> you, you don't need no Botox. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 can you hear us? You're like a young Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. No, nah, no, nah, we can't really hear you. Yeah, we, we can't really hear Carlos. No. Let's see. Say something. You hear me? Yeah. Oh, boom. Yes. There we go. There we go. Did you try something new with the audio or something? No, no. I'm just trying to switch it over to my headphones real quick. Okay, dope, dope, dope. Okay, Carlos, dope you, you, you look slender. You look slim in the face. You've you been dieting or something? Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. We've been we've been coming down a little bit. Oh, okay. If it's some, did you tell us last time your plans? You want to disclose what's going on here? No, 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 no. No, no plans yet. Um, okay. Probably leaning towards maybe like, if not New York Pro, then something after that. Ooh. Ooh, Stu. I'm sorry, Stu. Sorry to, sorry to hear that for you. He's 0 for 1, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> God, God, God forbid uh, Nexilla gets a visa. We don't, uh, like Stu said, cl- close the borders. No, no more. The <laughs> 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 no, no, no. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, are you? Are you? Did you make your way to Brazil yet? No, I leave. Um, I leave for Brazil Sunday. Oh, okay. So coming up soon. Coming up soon. All right. Yeah, man. I, I need. To, I'm excited to get there. It's gonna be fun. Why are you? Uh, how come you're coming down already? As far as weight, uh, just to get a better look of like, you know, kind of like see where we're at. Yeah, yeah, smart, smart. I've been uh I've been coming down myself because Nick Nick came on a podcast and called us all fat. So we, we all we all we all trying to <laughs> we all trying to uh trim up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So are you but, gonna uh, be running the whole prep out of Carl out of uh Brazil? Is that the plan? Uh, no, I'll I'll be coming back in April. Um so okay. I'll be there up in like the Arnold Brazil. Okay. 
Is is Stu frozen for everybody or just for me? Yeah, I, I thought that was just me. Damn it. Uh, I thought I he just had a picture up like that. I thought he was just like, that's his <laughs> He's like this, right? He's like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's old. I just thought maybe he's like at work or something like that. So he just wants to go audio only. So he just put a picture up. Uh, said, I'm unemployed now. Oh <laughs> man, I'm sorry. you gotta get. Would. You gotta start getting the uh, eat what you call EBT. We we'll get some food stamps. <laughs> food Welfare food stamps. fraud. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, I wanted to bring up. Uh, I saw. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mark Bell. Mark Bell's YouTube got. Uh, Cancelled apparently. Um, I but think back, it might though. be. I was gonna say I think he might be back up, but like w- when censorships get get gets to that point that people's like, bro, he he has like I don't know ha- half a million subs. He gets a lot of views. He makes a lot of money, I'm sure, from that, and he has ads and shit like that. When censorship gets to the point that it can destroy your livelihood, that 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 to me is wild, man. Um. I don't believe in putting all your eggs in one basket, which I'm sure he doesn't, right? But at, at what point, like, my thing is, like, what can we do to, to, to like, protect ourselves from, from that kind of shit? Because at any moment, your YouTube, Instagram can be taken down, and then you don't really have much of a say. You know, Mark is really connected, so from, from what I heard, he knew the right person and was able to reach out. But how do you, or, like, let's say, Sid, uh, I know you, uh, do a RX muscle. Imagine if they just tick tick down the entire fucking shit tomorrow. You know what? What would be some ways you would go about uh, covering your 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 own ass? When, if well, like we kind of had a taste of that. We had a taste of that just about like a month and a half ago. I don't know if you remember. But we were suspended for for a week. We could not upload anything. The channel was mm-hmm. being down, but it was suspended. So you know, kind of out of desperation, we, we started figuring out. All right. Well, where else can we broadcast? What else can we do? What? How yeah. else can we cover our tracks? Right. So, I mean, we I mean, we went live on Facebook. We would upload directly on Twitter. You know, we started looking into like Rumble and some of the other platforms. But you know, at the end of the day, we are kind of at a tough spot. I mean, I say we. I mean, all of us, because yeah. you know, I'm not going to mention them by name. I don't want to get your channel in trouble, but they kind of set the rules and they don't have to tell you what the rules are. They could just enact them whenever they want. And if you are in violation, you're not going to get an events notice. They could do, you know, whatever uh, disciplinary action they feel fit. So with, with Mark and with a lot of other channels, what happened is I guess the story goes or the consistent pattern is that they had links to sites that they did. They deemed to be suspicious right now with us, what happened is, um, on an episode months ago, there was talk of uh, the shot, right? And um, I guess the justification was that that was in, you know, uh, that was not in accordance with what the World Health Organization was saying or their stance on the shot, right? So they mm-hmm. they did a blanket, you know, punishment on a lot of different channels. Some got taken down, period. We we're lucky in a sense when we got suspended. But yeah. The problem is, yeah, what do you do if that were to happen? And I don't know if we have an answer to that because the the, the next step would be, all right, we'll open up a Rumble account, um, you know, try to have some success on Twitter or Facebook. I don't know if the bodybuilding audience is large enough on those platforms where it would be any bit of a of an easy transition. You would literally have to go about now trying to create a brand new audience from scratch. That's 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 the unfortunate part. And uh, but it is something that I think all of us, you know, creators of the bodybuilding space really need to start thinking about because this could happen at a moment's notice. Yeah, it, it would be beautiful if we could just all go to Rumble and be successful. But the truth is that there's just not enough. You know, there's not enough people. I mean, YouTube by far is the biggest. Uh, YouTube is is TV at this point. Everybody's on YouTube. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So if you want to go to Patreon or this or that. It's just not, it's not even close, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully one day we can have those, uh, those, uh, I guess, uh, websites or uh, something new that could allow people to have freedom of speech. Um, but right now it's just not there, you know? Hopefully they don't take down my channel because I don't think it's big enough. But yeah, you said about Mark Bell, about the, um, the link, right? Bro, so many people put up links to all sorts of sites, you know, with, whether it's, uh, I don't know, research cams or straight right, up yeah. you know, gear. 
But yeah. Mark Mark is a pretty big channel, but I think it's more so that he does get political. You know what I'm saying? He talks about politics. I think I, I think that's what they really don't like. Anything that has to do, like you said, with the shot or anything politics, if it doesn't go with what YouTube believes in, they don't they don't fuck with it. Which is but there which are is a lot there are there are bigger channels than Mark Bell's that talk about way more controversial things and 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 they're fine, I right? So I, I, I again I don't know what what the line is, right? Because I don't know if there's going to be a consistent pattern across whatever disciplinary action they take, right? So some channels they're going to say, well, you're linking to a suspicious site or a site that sells stuff that we deem to be suspicious. Others, it can come down to be like, you know, whatever your quote unquote political views may be, you know, uh, what we deem to be in violation of this because, you know, this is our line. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's a sticky subject and it's one where I, mean, I know you're discussing it on the show, but it's almost like how much how in depth can you even go without potentially landing your channel in trouble? You know what I mean? Going too far, you know. Yeah, I know what happened. It happened with. um <laughs> Uh, Nick uh, Chigili. I don't want to say the channel name yeah. because apparently yeah, they can yeah. they can strike you down if you even say the name. Or yeah. I, I actually want to have him on, but I'm scared to have him yeah. on because they can they can strike you for for having him on. It's like you know, and that channel it didn't even get taken down for that channel. He got taken down for his last channel. Believe it or not, as crazy as that sounds, he had a channel before that. So I think he's done a really great job transitioning though, like his Instagram and his uh. I think it was Patreon and Rumble. They seem to be doing pretty well. His coaching business yeah. is doing well. Mm -hmm. I'll say this, and I, and I know, um, uh, obviously, him and and Dave Dave Palumbo have had their back and forth. So, but I will say this: Nick Trigilli brought something very uh, entertaining, very unique to the bodybuilding space, right? I mean, whether you agree to them or didn't agree with him, the way that he packaged, you know, his own updates, his own news, his commentary was unique. And, and I think that is sorely missing and sorely lacking uh, from body. Obviously, there are going to be those that have very negative opinions on him based off what he said. And I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying, you know, again, if we're, for, for, to stand by bodybuilding media, bodybuilding commentary, bodybuilding opinions and opinion givers, then, you know, you have to respect the job that he did. So when his channel was taken down and taken down for really reasons that were beyond his control, I look at that as an unfortunate thing for the industry as a whole, because you took something away from bodybuilding entertainment, bodybuilding, you know, um, for, for bodybuilders and bodybuilding fans to consume. You know, because I mean, as it is, you know, really, how many channels are there right now that have a, that you could consider to be a media outlets or you know opinion givers of any sort that do this on a near daily basis? So you take one of the biggest voices away, and it's sort of like, what are you achieving out of that? What are you getting out of that? If anything, you just took away from one of your largest audiences. That's a global audience. So I don't know. It's yeah. it's an unfortunate thing. I mean, I, I'm happy that at least. You know he's doing well personally with his coaching, um, with his other business ventures. But it's it's a blow, man, and not everybody could bounce back like that. Yeah, I think, I think what part a, of his appeal sorry. was like he was not not at all to say that he's anything like <laughs> Boston was, but like he kind of filled a bit of that vacuum that was left by him. You know, in terms of like the mm -hmm. some of his brutal honesty with stuff. Um, I think, like I said, it's he's not really he's not at all a replacement. They're, very different people but like th there is still a huge vacuum that boston boston left in terms of like complete raw honesty in the sport you know <laughs> coming from somebody f who has like zero you know obligation to like the league or anybody to say things that are politically correct or anything you know just call it how they see it and actually have like some legitimacy to back up their opinions you know uh, yeah. There's not a lot of people like that. Love, love them or hate them. We need people like Nick. We need people like Boston. Uh, you don't have to agree with everything they say. You don't even have to like them. But we, we, we do need people like that. You know, what I'm saying people who are going to be raw, unfiltered, and say the stuff that sometimes needs to be said, but nobody's willing to say it. You know, what I'm saying so. Those people are, I think, important to any, uh, any uh, industry. Nick, Nick Nick's channel was it was really entertaining, man. You know, like you don't want him to you don't want him to turn on you and say those things about Super Sick, 
but it, it sometimes I mean he he doesn't lie, you know. Everything seems to seems to check out. It's just sometimes the truth hurts, right? Like Arx Muscle says, the the, the 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 truth hurts, and we don't have to all like each other. But one thing about Dave that I like is that, like when Nick's channel got taken down or something like that happens, he never gloats yeah. at that. He's like, no, that's that's we don't that's not what we want. Or even he could have a difference with you know Bob Chicarello, this or that. But he knows when it's wrong is wrong. He's not gonna you know what I'm saying? he's not gonna act like good for you. He's gonna be like, no, no, no. He still deserves to say what he wants to say. Even if he's talking shit about me, that's fine. He still deserves to have a voice. So that that's that, that that's something that Dave is, is definitely fair about. And I think we should all be fair about that. We don't all have to agree, but let's agree to disagree. But you should still have your voice. You know what I'm saying? How, how do you feel about that, Zay? I feel like Zay likes his freedom. Yeah, <laughs> Welcome sure. back to America, by the way. <laughs> God bless Welcome you. back. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I do do agree, man. They shouldn't cancel him for for that reason. Uh, this is in the past. Why would they punish him for the present? In the present, for the past, you know, that makes no sense to me. But I do feel like if you don't talk in politics at all, uh, you won't get canceled. So I don't know what he did. I, I, uh, yeah, this is the I fine mean. line. I feel like if you leave politics out, I don't think you they would they would bother you, you know. And, I don't know. There's uh, channels like Andy Frazella's that are like pretty po political to a certain extent, bro. You know, like the first form owner. Yeah, like he yeah he's gotten he's a gotten a lot more political lately, like a lot more political. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but like his so, channel. But, didn't but maybe get, that's just before the. That's, mm -hmm. Yeah, but maybe that's before the shoe drops. You know what I mean, before the, and he gets cut off too. So, but I but I don't know. But he's he's a lot political lately. A lot of those channels just get demonetized. Like if they're just political stuff off across the board, um, they just get demonetized. So they're not really able to make a living doing YouTube exclusively. They got to be supported by other like Patreon or whatever the fuck, right? Um, but like just straight off the bat, I don't know if Mark's channel was demonetized. Um, I imagine if he was talking about gear, that it probably would have been. I mean, is Beatty is your channel demonetized? No, it is it's monetized for now, but but yeah. I don't I, I don't expect it to stay that way. But I, I think we're not censoring ourselves, but I think we caught on pretty early on. Like after, you know, I, I'll listen to the podcast afterwards and I'll see if I need to make edits. I think we, we realized that we would love to just speak freely like we would off air. But I sent you guys, you know, the other day, I'm like, there's there's pretty, there's pretty much three basic rules that we still have to follow. We don't have to follow. But we choose to follow, right? And some some things are better left off the podcast. You know what I'm saying? It's just the reality. Everybody loves honesty. Everybody would love to hear it. But sometimes it's just it just can't it can't work that way. It's still it's still a public platform, so you have to be careful. Anytime it's other people's private business, I'm not putting that on air just because that's not my place. I forgot the other two rules. Oh. Uh, I can't even say the other two rules on on air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> it, it's kind of gonna blow the spot, but yeah, you have to remind this, me of those. I don't remember what they are, so I might break them. <laughs> Matt, if, if if Stu if Stu came on here and we just let Stu go, bro, Stu would be canceled so quick, bro. And, hey. uh, <laughs> and it's like, but it's also why we love Stu. But at the same time, we almost that's why we always say be careful, Stu, because it's like. <laughs> We would love for Stu to be himself, which he is himself. We would love for Stu to say anything he wants, but the world just don't work that way, bro. It, unfortunately, you just can't. I mean, off air, yeah, perfect. We have those conversations, but sometimes you just can't do it, you know. You got to look at it as YouTube is like television. You think you're going to just hop on Channel 5 and just say whatever the fuck you want, or you're going to hop on Sports Center within, within reason, but you can't just be on Sports Center saying anything and everything you want. It's it's just how the world works sometimes, you know. Um, I think unfortunately, one of the other guess, issues that like the reason why guys like Mark get banned and then unbanned is like they're trying to automatically police a problem, like with algorithms and you know stuff that none of us understand. But it's a seriously difficult issue to resolve. You know, there yeah. there's like millions of videos that like get uploaded every day. You know, probably billions of hours of footage, and you know you're going to review that all manually it's impossible you know and how much of that is like you know cp or just like completely horrible shit 
you have yeah. to you have to censor that stuff off of here right but so you know the the whole political algorithming is is kind of it doesn't work very well yet uh yeah, yeah. I, I don't necessarily want it to work really well because you know that creates this whole other kind of like 1984 fucking censorship paradigm that we don't really want we don't but, want it. uh it, i think it's just a poorly designed system right now that they're kind of running with and trying to tweak as they go there there's a there's a huge lack of being consistent like you said bot, bots can only track so much right uh konevsky was fine right he had he was up to like half a million subs was doing pretty much whatever he wanted right the moment he had an issue with i think uh it was usc or something some school and then he was all over the news like he pranked his school they're gonna sue him that's when he, he got that eye on him because now now we're talking about news now once he got that eye, eye on him it wasn't that long after that uh whatever happened with him happened you know, so I think I think you could even have like a, a a following, a big following. But if you're not, I think Mark Mark Bell is mainstream enough that that eye was on him. You know, at one point The Rock was following him. You know, what I'm saying shit like that. So it's like I believe The Rock unfollowed him, which is kind of kind of weird. But the, the The Rock is trying to get that money. He's like, I don't want to pay for, dude. <laughs> I, I don't want nobody. The Rock just wants to make money at this point. He doesn't, you know, what I'm saying so. Uh, yeah. So when that happened. I think I think Mark is already he was already under that eye, so he can't really he has to be even more careful. We're not under any eye; we can say what the fuck we want uh, for, for the most part. But uh, as you grow, you got to be more more careful. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's switch gears. Unless anybody has anything to add, you got something to add over there, Joe? Or are you good on that? No, I'm good on that. You don't. <laughs> Joe is smart. He he. There's certain topics he he doesn't I touch. Don't. <laughs> I, 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 told, I, I, I told Beatty that. Like, as soon as yeah. I get something to come up, I'll shut the fuck up real quick. <laughs> Honestly, bro, yeah. Sometimes that that's that's the smart thing to do. Some people, some people can't help it. Like Stu can't help it, bro. I, I can't help it. I, I just I'm getting better. Yeah, you are getting better. You <laughs> you kind of have to. But let's switch gears. Um, let's let's talk some bodybuilding. There's always a couple guys I want to check out. Uh, I think I saw something from Keon. P I think pe people seem to like that we talk bodybuilding, <laughs> but I think they like our take on bodybuilding because sometimes I'm like, ah, I want to talk about something else. But uh, I think some people get annoyed when there's zero bodybuilding talk because I've heard people complain about that. Like, some of these podcasts don't even talk about bodybuilding. And I'm like, they don't? I don't? I, I don't know if I agree with that. Let's, let's talk about tits or ass for the hundredth time. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think I'm talking about here? <laughs> That'd be one of those conversations that I shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So original. Oh, Keon, yeah. oh, Keon, Keon signed with uh, Yamamoto. Oh, shit. Is, mm -hmm. is this coach with Yamamoto? Uh, is this... Uh, yeah. Yeah. He is? Oh, yeah, Patrick with Yamamoto, too. Yeah, new begin. Uh, Keon was with Axe and Sledge. Well, he was with Bl Blackstone originally, right? Then he was with, with Axe and Sledge for for a while, right? For quite a while, and then now, uh, yeah, he's with, but, yeah, HT Muscle before that. Like a, oh yeah, you're right. Like you're right. Like that. that that was a while ago. I think Yamamoto has the uh, <clears throat> uh, has the ability to to pay you a lot more. I feel like they're they're a really big company, right? So I feel like. He's at a point where, you know, he deserves the, the big bucks. And I feel like this company has that kind of ability to give him what he needs. It's yeah, they do. Story. They pay their athletes really well. Um, their products are expensive. I don't know if you ever looked at their website. I'm sure they're good quality, but like typically the the, the you think that num like the company's doing numbers like that so that they could pay big athletes are like not necessarily selling cream of the crop stuff you know they're selling like kind of commodity type of supplements uh yeah, with yeah. good marketing attached but like all these guys they have a ton of pros on their roster really? and, uh, i'm sure i mean uh, vegan nathan yeah, diasha vegan, nathan diasha yeah nathan now Ted, oh uh, yeah big names you know yeah, they, yeah, look, there's, yeah some a lot of people and i mean we i, I would assume yeah. vegan would be expensive yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got they got some they got yeah, they got Nathan, you're right. They're and they're uh, Italian, right? Yeah, I don't know. Do they do they uh have products in North America or is this yeah. still Europe worldwide? I've never seen them at in Europe, yeah. but I've never seen them at, at, at Vitamin Shop, but GNC, that's for sure. Oh, they got Brandon uh, Hendrickson. I'm pretty sure you can still order them. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, they got some good guys. Yeah, is that but... Paul Gasol? Go up? <laughs> oh, no, shit. Go up. That... <laughs> no, go down, go down. The, the, on the left side of the grid. Is that Paul Gasol? No, no, no. I don't think so. Oh, <laughs> Kyle, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> they got Powell. They got, Powell. They got uh, everybody. Go they got the whole squad. Right, let me go back just, to they're, they're Italian, right? This is Italian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, they, so they yeah. used to, so they I, used to I think advertise I know what's this. going on here. All right, talk to us. No. no. Oh, no? Uh, okay. <laughs> oh. That's the after podcast. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> after podcast. Uh, the, the after podcast. Yo, the last episode after podcast was better than the, better than the actual <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and now what you could do is you can package that the after the after show put that on patreon oh yeah yeah see that it, it, it might be too Don't much for even patreon man sit out here <laughs> <and get some laughs> <people in game. laughs> what's that you gotta get strong huh oh, look at that get us the rest because <laughs> yeah you will know, get us locked up yeah uh a lot of times we when it's when it's private business i don't know man unless the person is okay with it but sometimes, you know, never mind. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> careful, yeah. Be very careful. All right. So, yeah, Keon, he looking like he's getting strong, too. Uh, I've never seen him do that in the past. I feel like yeah, he's really taking pretty. He's always been pretty strong for, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know what the, I guess, 212 standards, but he's always been like a really heavy lifter. Like, yeah. Merle was, well, was a couple of years ago. He trained with with uh, Branch, and I mean, he's he putting did. up some crazy. Yeah, you see, like Branch, you know, Branch gets into it. Branch Warren's like literally standing there, just like grunting, and like Keon freaking, you know, putting up like crazy numbers. But yeah, he's always mm -hmm. been strong. His, his his form seems a lot tighter nowadays too. You see the control, whereas uh, there, there was a period where he was doing like really ballistic, yeah, ballistic reps. Yeah, well, it's whatever you do. It, it was the it was the Branch Warren style training. I mean, that was exactly. it was entertaining mm -hmm. to watch. But I think you know you're right. I mean, now obviously, I mean, consider this as well. You know, he went from you know classic physique transitioning into two twelve. It wasn't the easiest transition, but now it seems as if he's found his groove. And I mean, you know, I mean, obviously, you saw his package, the you know Olympia winning package or whatever. I, I think he's really touched on something now, and I think uh, I think he's going to be around for a while. Yeah, I, I want to see more girls rocking Gasp and Better Bodies jerseys. That it just looks a gangster. <laughs> Me <that>. too. Uh, <laughs> use my code. <laughs> code his code actually works. I don't. Works. <laughs> I don't. I don't have a real real code. They gave me that the 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 generic BB fifteen code. <laughs> you know, you know they, they give you the, the the little generic codes if, if you're not somebody special. <laughs> All right. Speaking of training, let's go. Uh, who did I see? Sergio. Sergio, uh, trainer with Dorian now. Let's see what he's uh, looking like. Man, this dude always finds like the best places to hang out and train. <laughs> like he's he was in Crazy. San Diego, and then he was in yep. Dubai, and now he's in fucking mm -hmm. you know Mediterranean Spain. I'm actually not sure what what is town he's in in Spain, but like, he's in uh, yeah. Marbella. Mar 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 oh yeah, Marbella. Yeah, Mar yeah. Mar yeah, Mar yeah, that's what it's Marbella. This is hey, dope. You know right? how we talked about best genetics of all time? We should have said his dad. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, imagine it's his insane. dad in this era. Look at look at I mean like he pretty much has his dad's genetic. The only thing is his waist is is wider. Because look at everything else is pretty much like I think his legs are a little bit bigger. Granted that his dad back then they they weren't trying to get big legs. But the only difference, if he had his dad's waist, bro, holy shit, bro. Yeah. But he's also he's also a lot heavier, you know. So I don't know. Imagine his dad in this era, all the oh, new man. shit. I mean, yeah, Sergio his dad like, was probably taking like a couple D ball a day because like, that's all they knew to do back then, you know. Yeah, <laughs> he's still Bro, like he, that. He said his dad never dieted. He said there was no diet. He said it was like 
There was no drop your carbs. He would just uh, train longer. There, there was no cardio. No, <laughs> I'm like, and this, this guy was winning Olympia wow. with no diet, no cardio. <laughs> the guy was just imagine just working out and then go compete. N <laughs> nothing, no, nothing else. You know, crazy. that's that's crazy. That that's just that's genetics. But let's see this training. Okay, let me see what's going on here. I don't see Dorian. I want to see Dorian in the, in the background. I see Dorian here. Okay. Okay. You don't see a lot of uh, a lot of pros doing barbell squats, especially now. Uh, I think he's pretty. Is Sergio forty or close to forty? Uh, he's like thirty-seven. I want to say thirty-seven, thirty-eight. Mm -hmm. You don't see guys squatting, but when you got Dorian behind you, I don't even think Dorian squatted, but he got he got uh he got Sergio squatting. Okay, looks into. Let me see what else we got. From training the content, I want to see some hardcore man. Where the hardcore? Okay, let's look hardcore. Okay, let's see. Can, can you can I turn on the volume? Can you guys hear? Oh, how do you turn the volume? I want to hear it. Can you guys hear that? No, no, no. Oh, I can no. imagine though. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it sounds it sounds pretty intense, yeah. But Serge is always trained hard, man. When when he used to train at Gold's Venice, he was pretty intense, you know. Um. I wouldn't say he's the strongest bodybuilder, but he's definitely not the weakest neither. He's like, but it's not about strength. It's about intensity. He he always gave it, from what I saw at least, he always gave it 100, you know, every time I, I saw it. All right. But no no physique pictures, I don't think. Anybody know Sergio's plans? Yeah. So I spoke oh. to him, like, what was it, in Dubai back in, what was it? the Dubai Pro, I think it was October. And I think at the time they were considering the, the Arnold Classic. Obviously, that's not happening. So, but when you said, Stu, what, what do you know beyond the Arnold Classic? What about his plans? Where is he living right now? He's in he's oh. in Spain right now. Yeah, in Marbella. Are there any shows yeah. in Spain? <laughs> Anytime soon? Right. But that's later in the year, no? Yeah, that's. I mean, it's in June. Yes, that's in later June. in the year. Yes, I don't oh, know if that's oh. his plan or yeah, because yeah. You, you would also have to factor in now. I mean, any state side. I mean, he did compete last year. I forget which show it was the Cal California. Pro. I think. Yeah, right. Okay, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you beat me. You know, now you're factoring a thirteen hour flight. I mean, Spain's not as far as Dubai. Dubai is like a literal twelve, twelve and a half hour flight. But I mean, you have to take that into consideration as well. But um, yeah, his plan was the Arnold Classic. Obviously, that didn't shape out, but I'm not sure what his yeah. next step would be. Hopefully, he doesn't do New York and uh, beat Stu again. Well, I think he's doing Spain. I mean, he, he's he's living in Spain. There's a, yeah. there's a show. I mean, he hasn't started prepping it, I presume. That's like five months away in the hey, middle man. of June. So. Those guys in I Europe. I think it's in November or October. There, there's a there's two I think there's multiple yeah there are two yeah. Yeah. yeah but the one in uh, the one in June is in uh, Alicante I don't think oh. I'm mispronouncing that but Alicante um, man th those guys in Europe those guys in Europe fucking uh <laughs> fucking uh, train hard all right well they're gonna pull up uh, I said train hard uh they they coming straight as fuck. Let's go. Speaking to the guys over there in Europe. Yeah, June sixteenth is the uh, Spain Pro, so I think that's the one in uh, Alicante. Okay, boom. What you guys think about this? You guys can see. I keep on saying this guy's falling yeah, Nathan. off, but fuck, man, <laughs> he keeps on getting better. So Looks pretty good to me. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, he looks just as big as he was. The last time around in his off season, but a lot better condition, right? Yeah, yeah. Two ninety five with lines in his glutes is fucking ridiculous, man. Like, look at him; he's not, he's not fat. <laughs> no, look he he has he got lines everywhere. Holy shit! This is how he used to look like at what at like two seventy maybe, and he looks at this like, like this at two ninety five. Listen, if if. If this is where he's going at 295 looking like this, bro, I think he's going to beat a lot of people that we don't expect him to beat anymore. 
Yeah, you know, he's probably going to be hitting the European shows because, I mean, he's just not able to make it to the U.S. And you know, I just hope that that fact doesn't, you know, affect the judging because there's a limited number of qualification spots. You know, why are they going to give it to a guy who can't come? Yeah, I'd be I'd be thinking that myself sometimes. Um, like like, and I feel like even if it's subconscious. I feel like that, that got across your mind, man. Um, but where do you guys, let's say if Nathan would have done the Olympia mm -hmm. last year, with his physique from last year, because we don't know what this is going to look like. I, I would assume this is going to be uh, much improved. But his physique last year, where do you guys see that placing uh, last year's though? I think he would have placed it in front of Tonio. That's what. Yeah. What was Tonio, eighth? Eighth? Seventh. Seventh, yeah. No, it, what, was it Hunter, seventh? Yeah, Antonio was eight. Okay. Yeah, okay. Regan, Regan yeah, was I was, who was six? Yeah, I would put him like around like that. Who got six? Was it was Hunter was six. Um, yeah. And then, so, uh, Andrew, I'll read it off right now. So Andrew was oh. fifth. Yeah. Um, obviously, Derek Hotty Samson, <clears throat> Brandon, Andrew. Six was Hunter. Seventh was a uh, Crizo. Eighth was Tony. Oh, oh. Yeah, ninth was Regan, tenth was uh, Charles Griffin, eleventh was Hassan. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Chris, I, can, I, Chris, Joe. I can see him right yeah. there around eighth. Seven. Chris, Chris Seven. already beat Nathan, right? Chris will beat Nathan. Which show was that? Was that his? Was that the after. third show that he did? That was the last. That was the last show. That was, no, no, yeah, was that Prague? Yeah. I don't. I, I don't think Chris is a better bodybuilder than Nathan, though. I. I don't know. I. I, I don't see it. Like granted, he he did look a lot bigger than him, but I don't I don't think he's complete enough next to Nathan. It depends how Nathan looks. Like this Nathan, at, if if he's two ninety five, lean like this at five seven, he says, well that's bigger yeah. than Crizo technically. That's not bigger structurally, but that's more muscular than Crizo if you're fucking five seven. So Crizo's legs are better. Better than who's Nathan? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, I don't. I, I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that. I, you I, agree. I, I, definitely I better quads. You agree with definitely that? Definitely better hamstrings. Yeah, I think he has better quads for sure. You, you think Chris or... is like the fullness, but like because I mean, I but think what he has really good like his quads. So he's decent. I mean, wait, wait, wait. But, uh, from the back, from the back, it's like the same. Like they don't. They both like they're a little slighter in the hamstrings. You guys yeah, think like, Chris o has better legs than Nathan from the front? Or from the uh, back. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? Overall, oh, yes. Oh, I, 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 I don't agree. I, I don't agree at all. He beat him in Prague. Yeah, but the man was on his like show. Yeah, that but, was like towards the end. He was tired. Also, I, I, the the shows after the Olympia that Nathan competed in were not really a good test of his physique for various reasons. <laughs> Um, bro, N N Nathan's quad sweep is insane, bro. Nathan has like massive quads, bro. Let, so is Chris. I I I don't think Chris has massive quads, bro. I'm sorry. I think it, there's a reason why he beat him. Yeah, but it wasn't the quad. Okay, so you see these quads? Right? There's let's, a let's reason. Look at these quads. Yeah, <laughs> they're the reason. I thought. Right, so, so, <laughs> let's look at these quads. Pretty good. Uh. Let's see. Oh, well, that's the only shot. That's like okay. That's that's pretty good quads. Are there any more? Kind of stage big. Oh, the, it looks good here for sure. Yeah. So the thing about Chris's quads is they are bigger physically than Nathan's, but Nathan's quads pop right off of his hip. Like, look at it. It's just like whoop right off of uh right off his hip bone. And look, then, look at it. I like this. Bro. Look at this yeah. sweep. And look Chris's, at the teardrop. Chris's quads kind of go down a bit and then start coming out a little more. Kind of like Nick's, but not quite as low as Nick's. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't agree with that. I gotta be honest. I think, I, I think the only thing Crizo has over Nathan is structural size. I don't even think he has more muscle. I think he has a, a bigger structure, so he's a bigger guy. But I don't think he has an, any one body part better than Nathan besides arms, arms and shoulders. And even that, Nathan's arms and shoulders are pretty freaky. I don't know. But uh, the only body he has over him is the waist. He has a better waist. That's it. 
I prefer Nathan's physique over Chris. I just think Chris is a little more, more developed in certain areas. Who, who had the better waist than who? Uh, what, uh, Nathan has a better waist. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I said I like Nathan's physique better myself. I just think um, it's a proportion thing. Mm-hmm. Like, what's his name? He's just big, real big everywhere. Yeah, he's pretty fucking Except big. Except his ass. <laughs> yeah, he don't, he don't got a lot of ass. Glutes, oddly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nathan has huge quad sweeps. I, I don't know, but I, I always thought Nathan had crazy quads, personally. Like, I, I, I never... I uh, well with his physique. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, got, they're, they got crazy shape, but they're not actually... Huge, yeah, they're not actually you huge, know? yeah. Yeah, but I'm not even talking about my ass. I've never seen him in person, but like, you know, like if you, when he moves, like you can see how much meat is on that leg, and it's not as much as Crizzo's, but the the sweep and the pop, like my legs are kind of like that. My legs are not as big as they look because I I have like my quad sweep pops off my hip, and it helps me a lot. Yeah, yeah, the the sweep is like Nick Nick Walker has huge legs, but his sweep doesn't pop off yeah. the hip. So you don't see it. Shape, shape is shape is just as important as size. The right shape can create a crazy illusion. Yeah, but I think I think with these improvements that look like he's making, I think he's gonna start to beat guys again that he used to beat, and I think he's gonna surprise a lot of people. Uh, let me see who else. We got the Arnold coming up. A bunch of people dropped out, right? Nexilla. So who else? I don't know if he's still. Yeah, I don't know if he's dropped out yet. I I think they're still. I, 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 they're still waiting. I was gonna text Cormier to see if there was any update. They're waiting to see if they can get the visa situation resolved. I think the same stands for Hadi as well. Um, mm-hmm. but I don't know if they've officially dropped out yet necessarily. I mean, the only one that I guess made it official was Andrew. But I mean, you remember when they first put out that poster, right? With made the the lineup announcement. If mm-hmm. you notice, like in very subtle letters, they put pending, pending, pending for yeah. for Hadi, yeah, for yeah. Andrew, and for uh, Rubiel. And um, they changed they changed yeah. that when uh, when somebody got their visa, like they changed it from pending to confirmed. They put something Andrew. Up on their page. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was it was Andrew, yeah. and and, and, I, and that was about like for, three weeks ago. Right, so right, exactly. For Rubiel or for Hadi, so like that shit's still <clears> in the air, man. I mean, hey, man. especially for Hadi. I mean, Listen, Rubio could like walk up through the southern border and probably get in here. I'm only half joking. Like, <laughs> if you're get in here. <laughs> if you're if you're six weeks out, you don't have your visa, and you're eating cakes and and drinking. I don't I I don't believe you have any intentions of doing the Arnold Classic. If you're eating whatever this this dish is, and once you're eating this dish right here, prep is over. Trust me, prep is over. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember. Oh, Cormier, look at this cake. Cormier is coaching him, so like this might be total standard for, fire protocol for those guys. <laughs> high carb day. It's just a high carb day, you know. He went and danced his ass yeah. off on like a couple points of Molly after this, and he was like skinny <laughs> the next day. <laughs> like, but but like but like but like mentally, if I don't have a visa at six weeks out. I don't, I don't know if I could come into that show unless I'm I'm Roman and I'm just fucking peeled, just just sitting around peeled, you know. That but if I'm like Rubiel, he looks like he's somebody harder to peak. If 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 everything isn't in plan six weeks out, uh, I I don't know if I'm gonna. Well, if you guys remember, uh, Stu, you mentioned the Southern Porter. A, there was a uh, an Iranian bodybuilder who was uh, qualified for this past Olympia, Beruz Tabani. And um, you remember like him and Milos, you know, they were sweating it out till pretty much the last week where they decided, obviously, they weren't going to get the visa. But they were, I mean, he was in prep literally up until they pretty much to the point where they just realized there was no way they were going to get, you know, because it was such a process for him. He would have had to go in person. It was either Dubai or uh, Turkey or Armenia. There were like three entry ports or exit ports rather for Iranians. And, um, you know, they just could not, they they had congressmen from here, from the, from the United States, you know, write, you know, um, uh, whatever you call it, testimonial letters or whatever. It just didn't happen, but he was in prep literally all the way through the end. So, I mean, they, they were hoping for a miracle. It just didn't happen. It's unfortunate, very unfortunate, but yeah, you see pictures like that. You have to think twice if, uh, Rubio's actually, 
I, I'm, I'm going to text Cormier, see if he can give us an answer or if there are at least somewhat of an update. But uh, I, right now, I'll say probably not likely, probably not likely. And I think it's going to be it's going to be Samson. And I mean, who else is there going to be? I mean, even Hottie's kind of up in the air as well. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, how far are we from Arno now? Six weeks, six weeks out. <clears throat> Yeah, just yeah. I think just to. under six weeks. Yeah. You guys want to do like like early uh, predictions? Oh no, I hate predictions. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we don't, don't we even don't... know if half the yeah, we lineup's don't... gonna be there. I mean, yeah. we don't know who the fuck is gonna show up. Good right point. Now. No, we we can't do predictions yet. Yeah, we literally don't even know who's gonna show up because if well, we know Andrew isn't gonna show up, but if Nexilla doesn't show up. That's going to change. Well, if 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 Hardy and Nick Zilla don't show up, the lineup is completely <laughs> yes. a, a yeah. different, uh, a, a different lineup. You know, oh, this 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 is kind of random, but I saw this guy the other day. Uh, what's his Instagram? AK, yeah, AK the Giant. Jamie. Is he is he officially yeah. retired? He's officially retired, I assume. Yeah, he's done with competitive bodybuilding because he didn't want to get get up to three eighty, which is probably smart. Because the, the, the only that's the only you, you would have to been like uh, what's the guy named uh, Kovacs? He would have to literally get up to you know the mid the mid high three fifties, you know, just to be competitive at six foot. I don't know seven or how tall is he? Whatever, he's, whatever his height is, like six foot five. And yeah, I mean, I remember him talking about like his decision to retire, and he looked as good as he ever had in his last mm-hmm. season. He did like mm-hmm. a couple of shows in Europe, and he was just like. What the fuck? Why am I not placing? And he was he was really bothered about it, and you know, understandably, uh, he was as good as he'd ever been. Um, but yeah, it's just he like he, he's fighting an uphill battle. Forgive the pun if there's one in there, but um, I just I, I just like his style of physique. I just like his style of physique. So I, imagine how people say, "Well, if Bumstead did the open, he would win." But it's like this guy has a similar, very similar structure. But a lot bigger, actually, you know, and he and he 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 couldn't he couldn't win a show, you know. So and I remember uh, he was on. I don't know. If he's probably not still on there, but um, he was on the train by JP uh, like paid forum section where they have like athlete logs for all the pro athletes and stuff. He was doing a. He was taking a lot of drugs, like an insane amount of drugs. Um, well, he needs it. Yeah, when he, if you're that, for that tall, size, you know, yeah, but like. Yeah. Fuck, man! That's and to not win a show after doing all of that. It's like, man, like what? What? What's a lot? Like what? What's that? Uh, what? No, don't, don't even don't don't mention. Yeah, it, it was a, it was a lot. You know? And um, yeah. So you know, I think it's, he absolutely made the right decision. It looks like he's doing other stuff now, more in like the pop culture hemisphere because he is like a freak, you know. So, hey, oh man. yeah, yeah. Cool. First of all, he's a good looking guy. T- what was that? Who was that one tall guy who like who did like a movies and stuff? He was with the five percent thing. Mark, uh, yeah, Mark, Mark, Ford. Mark Ford. Yeah, Mark yeah, Ford. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's doing I mean, big. Like, he, he's doing big stuff. He he was in Fast and Furious, bro. He's in all type of shit. He's getting some good good money, man. Yeah, I think, and this guy is better looking than that guy. You know, and he so has the other thing. I don't know if you. If this is why you brought this story up, or you know, he's been getting like slammed all over the United Kingdom recently. I don't know if you know about this, why? No. Jamie. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's happened is, you know, he's. Uh, I'm looking this up right now only because there's this. Uh, I don't know. She used to compete. Like uh, she's from England. Uh, Louise Rogers. She's a, she's an IFBB pro. She sent me a magazine <laughs> cover. You, you guys, you know that publication, The Sun. In, in the United yeah, Kingdom. Yeah. Right. That's like it's a, their it's a uh, fucking tabloid rag. Yeah, right. Tabloid, right. <laughs> so like the cover on the cover, it says I don't know if you if you if you could find this, whatever. It's gladiator <laughs> giant steroid shame. So she's saying what? that like there's like yeah, it's like he's all over the news. Oh, all he's on a game he, show now, right? Like right, gladiator, he's on a game gladiator show. show? Oh, but what yeah. happened is I guess a video had emerged. I'm reading this like her DMs, whatever. Like um there was a leaked video uh to the press of him boasting about you know his cycles or whatever you know and uh, the thing is she's like look it's pretty much common knowledge that half that you know lineup on that tv show is on something it's on something right and it's legal in the uk like fuck off but but him being a body but i don't know if it's 
not, I don't know if it's legal, but I mean, I think it's the same here as the United States where it's like body is still looked up. Yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, you know, just like, okay. Baseball, right? Like, it's funny because, you know, I come from the mainstream sports world, you know, so I'm still very much, I remember in the beginning when I would hear the word steroids, I'm like, oh, like, oh my God, you guys take steroids, you know, but then it's like, you start to, then obviously that's, I'm blunted to that, but you know, the outside world, they still see anyone on steroids as, you know, yeah. cheating or as a freak or whatever. So, so anyway, they, they took this on and they ran with it. So right now, He's getting a lot of grief from like the mainstream press in the UK because obviously, look, now that he's on this show, he's shot to fame, right? As a bodybuilder, you know, yeah, a few people in the United Kingdom knew him, but not really any sort of semblance of mainstream. But now he is on this show. Everybody knows him. Obviously, he stands out. He's six foot five and he's a bodybuilder. But, you know, once you get that attention on you, people are going to dig. And once they find that kind of stuff, the oh, well, look at this guy bragging about his steroid cycles, forget it. It's all over the yeah. place now. So, that fucking it's just sucks, so funny because, like, in the UK, the the law is you're allowed to have steroids for yes. personal use, but you can't sell them. Um, so so how do you, you know, one I'm, of the, I'm uh, reading this Sun article right now. It's so fucking cringy. Somebody <laughs> said that uh, I, I believe I, I believe I heard that you can you can own you, you can have it and use it, but you can't buy or sell it legally. Yeah, right? That's, that's the same law in Canada. Yeah. How, how the hell would you get it if you could if you couldn't buy it? It got to be a gift, exactly. You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like <laughs> you could only you can only get, take it as a gift, and then you might just tip tip the the, the gift giver if you if you if you know if you want to. Yeah, but uh, so <laughs> that that's so weird, man. So I mean, so technically he shouldn't be getting slack because it's not illegal to use it, right? He he didn't buy it; it's a gift. It's a gift, so. You know, it's, 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 it's the whole court of court of public opinion. Again, we're look, we're so entrenched in the bodybuilding circle. So to us, it seems silly that they would. And again, you know, consider, you know, we always talk about bodybuilding in the Middle East and why is bodybuilding so popular, so big in the Middle East, because there they see bodybuilders as 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 warriors, as heroes. You know what I mean? It's like men. They're not looking at it as like, oh, oh my God, he's taking steroids, so he must be some sort of like a subhuman whatever. It, in the United States, and I'm assuming based off this uh, commentary, this rhetoric in the United Kingdom as well, and same goes to Canada and Australia, in the mainstream, you know, look, somebody gets popped for steroids in the NBA and Major League Baseball or whatever, we look at them as cheaters. Like, you know, oh my God, you should be ashamed of yourself, this and this and that, right? Whereas the reality is, in the four major sports, if, if, if obviously it's not going to be common knowledge, what percentage do you think are on something? It's a pretty large percentage. The the competition to get that next you know twenty million dollar contract versus being in the minor leagues that fine line is so narrow, right? So if you're not on something, you know you're you're not keeping up with the Jones. I know everybody put pinpoints Barry Bonds and that, oh Barry Bonds even before Juice was an all-star, was a Hall of Famer, and that he saw everybody else breaking records, so he decided to get on whatever. How do you know that? How do you know he wasn't on something already? Peyton Manning literally had a mail to his house, and they're saying, well, you know, he has GH, but it was under his wife's name, so it wasn't really him or whatever like that. I mean, look, we, we're not the, the NFL. The NFL is, like, rife with ton of growth hormone use. Of course. Like, in, like very sure. high doses of growth hormone, because it's the only way you can keep yourself together for a whole season. Uh, in that sport and then uh it's not even hidden yeah so so when the nfl so i I used to work at that you know okay where they have the new york pro in teaneck new jersey that marriott yeah yeah marriott hotel so at that hotel that's where the jets and the giants used to stay along with rutgers so they would come and uh at the time i I was i guess you call it banquet setup so I, i would assemble and disassemble all the setups so so they would have their whole Therapy sessions and massage sessions, and I would have to throw out the trash. And what's in the trash, right? Mm. Needles and vials and stuff. And I'm like, they're not even trying to hide it. Like, why don't you want to put that in like a personal? They're like, we don't give a fuck. Like, of course we, of course we're juicing. Like, what the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like, but what if what if I I got my phone out and took a bunch of pictures? You know, they they'll probably sue the fuck out of us out of us. So nobody would do that. But <laughs> it's not it's not even as secretive as, as we think. Like, of course, bro. We're talking about these guys are doing front flips over. Into the touchdown, like wh- what are we talking about? You you got linebackers three hundred pounds doing backflips and running a fucking 
four four you know four like three. four flat. You know, like, bro, this is not genetic. I'll give you great. another example, right? I'm not going to mention his name. I don't want any lawsuits or being filed or whatever. One of the greatest basketball players on planet Earth to ever hold a basketball is playing yeah. now in his 20th season. And mm -hmm. yet he's playing as if he's still 22, 23 years old. He's still dominating guys that weren't even born when he first ended in the league. <laughs> You're going to tell me. But people always, you know, it's the funniest thing. Podcast hosts will always be like that he invests a million dollars on his body every year between food, between mm -hmm. diet, between trainers or whatever. Gross. You're going to tell me that he's <laughs> playing at this level right now in his 21st season and he's not on something and not on a lot of stuff. How does that make every, any sense? That's almost public knowledge. His, his wife was, I don't know if she was indicted or what the case is, but... Uh, she was, I don't know if she was charged, but I, I, I've seen a couple of videos talking about that, that they, they kind of kept that hush hush, but the, 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 his old trainer, I believe indicted the wife or, or like, you know, uh, called out the wife's name that she was getting stuff for LeBron. Right. And I'm like, why Ooh. would his wife do it? LeBron James trying not to mention his name. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> so that, I that basketball that? player who, yeah, 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 the, 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 the <laughs> The the goat or, 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 or one of the goats, you know, but yeah, but but that's almost there's videos all over YouTube about it. It's just they're not gonna get many views because YouTube is. I mean, uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I, I don't think those videos are, are gonna get much views. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's almost public knowledge. If you go look for the information, it, it it'll come out. You know, so it, it's almost no secret. But then again, it is a secret. You know what I'm saying? So. But I maybe worse, we shouldn't even cover that topic like that. <laughs> I think worse than any of the like you know performance enhancing drugs and pro sports is like the painkillers. Like the NFL has a serious problem with painkiller abuse. Like they just they just give it to their athletes because if they're injured or things hurt and they need to play, like they will they're just prescribing pills and they've tried they've tried to start clamping down on this stuff more because you know, guys get out of the league and they're addicts basically. And um, so they've been like clamping down on the prescriptions a bit, but like, it's still a bad problem. And I think that's a way worse thing to put your athletes through. I mean, ultimately mm -hmm. it's all their decision, but like it's good for business. So they're fine. And, and, and LA bro, it's so easy to get painkillers. It's, it's almost too, they'll give you more than you want. Literally. They'll they give you that? more than you. Oh yeah, yeah. They, so they yeah. they've clamped down a lot on the prescribing rules in you know certain parts of the country, but that's mm -hmm. surprising. Hmm. I don't I don't know the law. I just don't think people give a fuck about the law. I think uh, a lot of these people, if they can make a buck, you know, I, I don't know how legal what they do is. Um, but but they seem to follow guidelines, you know. So I don't know anything about this. I'm just talking third person, you know, what I'm saying. So I just is what I heard. Uh, around the block you know what i'm saying <laughs> but I actually but actually i just saw this uh this article it's funny we're talking about this can you guys see this oh yeah I yeah saw this. yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. so today. tristan thompson suspended for nba drug policy huh what what, what kind of drugs are we talking though are they going to go into the detail yeah oh, pds you, oh look did you read it that's for ped no i didn't read it yeah so he, he got tested for like uh, I think it was like one some sorry, sorry. Like LGD. <laughs> Somebody yeah. said uh, I saw a uh, uh, Ross Flanagan. He said Sarp Sarp Goblin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was, I think it might have been uh, MK MK six seven seven as well. But, yeah, but why that doesn't that's like what I would rather you take growth or something. That's I don't think they really know what they're doing because anytime they fail, it's like it's like a, a random ass drug. It'll be like T ball. Like why the fuck are you taking T ball, bro? Dude, these are like, got they're just guys. Like nobody teaches them about yeah. this stuff, and they're like their buddies. Like, hey, dude, this won't this won't pop on a drug test. <laughs> you will tell them that. Yeah, it totally will. <laughs> Twenty five, but see, okay, but but here's the thing. Let's be real. If, if if that other NBA player, the goat, if 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 he he's not gonna, they're not gonna suspend him twenty five games. That's and money, it would bro. it would not hit the news. It would not hit Never. the news. You will not know about it. It will not be all over the news cycle. Tristan Thompson is also a juicy name because of, you know, 
Chloe Kardashian, all that, whatever. So anytime he says anything, it's going to be news because you know it's going to get clicks. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, they did the video mm-hmm. of uh, Michael Jordan, right? And <laughs> there was a play, a play happened. And he goes to the ref, like, hey, man, that was a foul. And the ref was like, you sure, Michael? You sure? And he was like, yeah, man, that was a foul. And the ref said, like, yeah. foul, foul, number 11. I didn't see it, Michael. I'm sorry, Michael. And I was like, that, that sums up pro sports for you. <laughs> he didn't see the it's foul, but he's like, uh, Michael, are you sure? Foul. If Michael says it's a foul, it's a fucking foul. There's no discussion. So, <laughs> like, yeah. It is, but it is. At, at, this, at this point, man, you, you can't put anything past anybody. Yeah, every yeah, every once in a while, they make examples out of guys like this, and I mean, they they gotta that fucking drug testing policy gotta be like holier than Swiss cheese, you know, with, with the way these <laughs> teams are performing, flimsy at best. But they like, let's be real, we all want to see the we, we all want to see the best. So I I, yeah, I definitely want to see them on here by design, man. It's 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 good for business. We talked about this on 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 the last podcast. Imagine if. You know, bodybuilding was drug free. It it wouldn't be oh, as yeah. exciting. Let, let, yeah, let's I just mean, say that these are all entertainment sports. At the end of the day, it's like sell. You know, getting views yeah. on television, selling ad contracts. So exactly, all yeah, right. that's the product, and you got to make sure it hits. That's why no one watches women's soccer. It's like <laughs> <laughs> the performance level is low. <laughs> w uh, WNBA. You know, you know what Shaq said about the WNBA. He said that they should, <laughs> they should lower lower the rim, you know. And when I heard that, I thought it was a great idea, but but they got pissed. They were like, "What? We're fucking <laughs> athletes! Don't how dare you!" And I was like, "I don't know, man. It looks when I watch somebody the WNBA highlights, I'm like, I think you should lower it a little." But listen, it, equity, not equality. Equity is great because if you look at it, well, the tallest players are like six six four, you know. You know, six five. Yeah, so like a I think game. Okay. It is. So it's almost unfair because they're doing layups and they're like fucking trying to throw the ball up five feet to do a layup. And maybe play maybe in they... bikinis while you're at it. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be but cool. If you bring that rim to you know a couple, you know, like a, a foot, foot and a half, oh, these girls get to doing three sixty dunks and shit. Uh, I would watch if I if I if I see a girl put it between the legs and fucking dunk on somebody, I'm watching that shit. <laughs> hey, maybe they shit. could institute like a fight culture, like in the the NHL. Oh, like hockey. You know? oh, yeah, bro. They start throwing hands. I watch. Where is fights. this going right now? <laughs> We're brainstorming, dude. We go from lowering the rim to we have hockey fights in the WNBA. Ooh. I was just gonna like, say, isn't there isn't there laundry yeah. football too? I think there is. I think there is. No, no, for sure. <laughs> WNBA, man. Oh, man. Okay. Let's get uh, – you guys want to answer the questions? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I want to see – I want to see girls dunking, bro. And, and not, 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 that, not that one tall girl that does that weird little layup dunk. Like, fucking – no, I don't want to see that. I want to. <laughs> I don't want to see the fucking yam that shit. Like ah, you know. I, 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 I want to swing on the fucking rim. Yeah, I want them to hang on a yeah. rim and kick somebody. Give like, some backboards break down. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. come on, man. Something give me happens. like a give me like a little pump, a, a reverse or something. I want. That's what I want to see, bro. So much of that shit. <laughs> All right, let's get into the questions. Oh yeah, I, I want to answer this guy's question because he concerned me. Um. He wants to know how do you bring up a lagging body part, and he said my arms lag so bad I'm considering doing lantis on arm day. So you can see why this this uh, question is concerning me. <laughs> so so <laughs> <laughs> let's start. Uh, Carlos got some big arms. So let's start with Carlos. Uh, should, should this guy do lantis on arm day? Carlos doesn't he, know just, what lantis <laughs> is. <laughs> Nah, bro, don't do that. Come on, bro. You'll be fine. Ah, there you go. Nah, no, nah, if, nah, if bro, said, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if he said human log, that would make more sense. I'm not saying that's what he needs to do. Yeah. But Lance, no, 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 gonna... no, no. Yeah. Come on, brother. You, you clearly don't know what you're talking about. But <laughs> but no, you should. I, I mean, it's a lot of people nowadays, they do like the PPL splits, and they don't really have like a specific arm day. So, mm-hmm. I mean, shoot, dude, I still have, I still have an arm day. Like and it's you know one of my best body parts. Why, so I'll definitely you've be... won. 
You should stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, fucking Nick Walker, you see his arms, bro? I got to catch that motherfucker. His arms are yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as long as arms are, it's a, hold on, hold on. Yeah. it's an arms race. Ken, that's what Ken. That's what. That's what Ken tells me all the time. Uh, me and Ken don't agree, but in Carlos's case, when you have legs like that, your arms can't be too big. There's, it can't because your legs are so yeah. fucking big. Nah, yeah, <laughs> nah, but I, I mean, if he doesn't have an arm day, definitely implement an arm day and just like you know, put the ego away with it. Like you know, I mean, when I do, I, I repeat the same routine and it just works. You know, I do. Mm -hmm. Biceps, preacher curls, spider curls, incline curls, hammer curls. Like that's that works for me. So once you find a movement, connect. Uh, it's simple, right? Connect with it. Like you don't have to be doing forty pound, you know, incline curls. I, and just find it, work with it within that rep range, twelve to fifteen. You know, change it up. Throw in maybe like a superset, some drop sets. Like you know, what I mean, Tr throw. Just try it. Switch up what you're doing. I don't know what he's doing, but if he's not having an arm day, do an arm day. Um, if you're using movements that like are way too heavy, you're not connecting with your biceps, like drop the weight down, really squeeze those muscles, connect with it, get that burn in it, get that pump, um, and just go from there. I mean, that was one of the first things that I learned when I started training arms. I was like, man, I got a pump. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep doing that. Like, you know, yeah. don't put that ego yeah. to the side. Stop trying to be curling the heaviest, curling the heaviest weights, 80 pound dumbbells and all that stuff. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Carlos, do you do any other arm work on like different days of the week? Like on a chest day, do you do triceps or something like that? Um, when I don't have like periodically, I'll bring an arm day back into my split. Like right now, it's back in there, um, but I eventually I'll move that out. Um, like and I'll put in another like a uh, another back day. So I'll move. That's when I'll move arms to my chest day. I'll do arms and like try like triceps, and then my my first back sure. day I'll throw in some biceps. Um, but but not when you time. have the arm day, it's just like that's the only time you're hitting those arms. It's, there's not like other work. That's the only time. Week. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sid, how, how do you get your arms so big, Sid? My arms big. What? <laughs> hey, look, showing, showing <laughs> off, <laughs> casual. Now, part of the conversation where I, yeah. I observe. <laughs> hey, don't don't be humble about. about, about I can see the triceps popping out the yeah. damn uh, species. Oh my god! City. Yeah, just you know, bursting, <laughs> yeah. Up, bursting through the screen. You know, high definition. Let's go, let's go, Joe. I, I pretty much agree with everything Carlos said. Uh, he, um, it's it's more of a um, a pump thing. So mm -hmm. I was trying not to go too heavy. Um, definitely have an arm day. Like I never stop my arm day because I want really big arms. And you want something, you train it directly. You know, don't make it a mm -hmm. secondary thing. Mm -hmm. So, and then four movements is more than enough per side. Um, I think that's what Carlos just said. He does like four exercises. That's all I do. Mm -hmm. uh, my my arms got up to twenty two inches so far, and that's all I do. That's not that's huge, it? but it's not small. You know? That's it, Joe. Just twenty two. Non pumped. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I, I thought I thought it'd be a little more than that, but it, that twenty two. You know, you know. Hey, no bull bullshit aside. Justin thought the same thing. When he <laughs> yeah. came out, he said, Are you sure? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, what what it is? If you're just you're you're so big everywhere, so it, it's hard to tell what's actually what's actually big big on you. <laughs> Let's go, um, arms, dude. I, I haven't measured them in like a year. Let's, let's see something. Show us something, Stu. No, come on. He was always, he always got him. He always got him. Let, let's see. Come on, about it. You yeah. thought about it. Yeah, I mean, let's go, Stu. Cheer him on, Stu. Come on, Stu. All right, let's, let's go, Stu. Go. Let's go. Oh there shit! Go. Oh look shit! That. Look at that. Oh, you yeah, see, uh, son. when you when you have peaky biceps, they always gonna measure. They're gonna measure bigger, actually. So like this one's kind of peaky, but this one is like not like it's a lot more like. You see uh, that asymmetry? Yeah. Yeah, it's, one of... It drives me nuts, more. but it is what it is. So. My, my left arm's slightly smaller on the tricep side mm -hmm. than my right. It's weird. I don't know why. Mine is, this, too. I've got, like, a jacked-up shoulder from a motorcycle accident re years ago, so I'm mm -hmm. trying to stabilize this shoulder, even on, like, two-arm movements. Yeah, yeah. kind of sus, but, um, like, this shoulder is, like, so shaky that, like, I, towards the end of the set, like, yeah, my, yeah, my arm is weaker, um, which is annoying, but 
Yeah, yeah. Try to try to even those peaks out. Do the uh the Marcus Rule protocol. Mm. <laughs> All over it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, oh, oh, Zade is perfect for it because Zade bar his arms up quite a bit. You know, when I when I met Zade versus now, like I mean, I don't know how many inches you put on your arms in the last few years, but quite a bit. Since twenty one, uh, I think about three inches. Boom! Without but without, dude, I was just gonna say, before... you need, Zade. yeah, and, no, no oil, no oil, neither Zade. <laughs> no, no. I did that bit. when I was twenty. No, when I, tw I will be honest. Like I no. said, when I was influenced by Boston, twenty sixteen, I did try the three CC <laughs> shit, uh, but I didn't last more than two weeks because mm -hmm. my arms were hot dogs, bro. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, "There's no way this is beneficial. No fucking way." It's it, it uh, doesn't work for everybody. You know, it it doesn't work so, for everybody. So red, yeah. It was so you, red all the how time. How much were you doing? How much you try? Uh, Three CC ahead, each head. Oh, you holy shit! That 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 only oh, worked. I found your problem. <laughs> well, because because the, the, that that was the that was the protocol, but that only worked for Boston because I've seen it work for other people, but never three CCs. Like I said, my friend, the other podcast, he did one. I believe it was one CC each head. I, I've never met anybody who was able to do three CCs and look good besides yeah, Boston. That's... That's yeah. a whole lot, dude. I mean, actually, since Sid, Sid's here, um, Dave, uh, Dave has a protocol that he'll send out to people when you ask for it. And I've seen uh, it. Does it's, he still, it, does he still he, do it? I think I don't know he if still, still does that. I, uh, David sent it to me actually, but it was okay, it was okay. Dave's protocol. Um, and like the loading phase in the first couple of weeks is like about that much. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like, "What the fuck?" It, <laughs> well, it, it it worked for Dave as well, I believe. But everybody's muscle can't absorb that much oil. It just like I, I told you, I tried it, bro. This <laughs> my bicep looked yeah. like Zay said it looked like a fucking like I don't know like a rock sausage. I I, I so some people just can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Some people can. Some people can't. Yeah. You know? I mean, you but can I'll, also start with like a fifth of that if you want to try it. If they, yeah, uh, yeah. To get back to this guy's question, though, if you're if you're asking to use Lantis on arm days, you are like so far off the plot that don't even think it. about using sight enhancement oil. Okay, just I, to be clear, I agree. I agree. But like, you know, if, if, when that when you come to cross that bridge, if you even need to, like, start yeah, yeah. really low, really low, and work your way up. Like, I've mm -hmm. I've done that stuff before, and it's like I've never had angry red shots or anything like it hurts it takes me getting used to it, but like i've never had like a sausage arm you know yeah yeah le, 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 uh, probably uh, Zay, your Zay arms Zay are already round your bicep is too round you i know, did, i had a flat bicep uh growing up until i grew a lot and then it became rounder but uh, yeah, during those days i was underdeveloped i was totally underdeveloped and uh i was it made it made my arm look like a giant cylinder that looked like that, you know. And I obviously, so, like I said, I lasted two weeks, and I I knew this was never going to be beneficial for me. It's just a matter of training and eating, and just growing overall. But I definitely incorporate arm day, and in case you're doing the push pull legs, I would definitely add an arm day. I also hit triceps with chest, and I hit biceps with back. So just to keep the blood volume high all throughout the week. And I do believe intra-workout shakes helped me a lot. Uh, before 2021, I never did pre-workout, I mean, intra-workout shakes. Mm -hmm. And during arm days, sp specifically, I would do a huge intra-workout shake with high volume training, like 12 to 15 reps. Like you did, you guys said, four to five exercises per, per muscle and tons of volume. I uh, I found out that uh, you know high volume works better on smaller muscle groups and larger muscle groups like legs and back would work better with low volume and just eight to ten as heavy as you can uh, and obviously you know me I always would always recommend the newbie machine if you have shit arms find someone who has the newbie fit machine and that thing will help you a lot. This is what helped me uh, since 21, bro. And I put a shit ton of mass just using that machine on my arms. 
and they're not bad at all at all anymore and i'm still working on them you know but uh, yeah. it definitely brought them up to match my calves you know and this is when i turned pro when i finally brought up my arms i, I finally helped me out on the stage for sure in terms of placings ken ken would be so proud of you uh, zay <laughs> Yeah. Right, uh, yeah, man. I do believe big arms are more valuable than any other thing, uh, excluding legs. If you have big legs, that's one. If you have big arms next, you're probably in the hunt for a big win someday. And you know I mean? we're not having this debate again, please. Yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not going there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Zayd, what, what about Dorian and uh, and Lee Haney? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we're, we're not going there. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, go. Did you, answer, did you answer? Did you answer? Did you answer, Stu? Uh, kind of. I mean, so I, I actually added an arm day this year for the first time in my forever um, in this off season. I think it's helped my arms a lot. I am hitting some. The reason I asked Carlos this because I am hitting some extra bicep tricep work on like my push and pull days earlier in the week. Then Friday is like my main arm day. Um, and I've been using a bit of oil in my arms. Um, I'm super inconsistent with it though, because I fucking hate doing it. Like I hate shooting my arms. So wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Go back. What, what, what would you say? <laughs> I, I said I, I've used a bit of oil in my arms this off season, but I'm hella inconsistent with it because I'm like I just hate shooting my arms. But what, what kind um, of what kind of oil? PCC baby, same stuff. Oh, oh. Uh, I've I've used I've only ever used that stuff. So, um, where do you put it? <laughs> in my sorry, arms, <laughs> but, but but like where like you go uh, outer inner and then you go tricep. You do well, both so like tricep. So when I I do one and a half cc's per muscle, not per head, per muscle when I do it, like once a week. So like, okay. you know, Zaid was saying, I do three CCs in both my bicep has, that is four times as much as what I do. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. You know, <laughs> and I've got like 22 inch arms ish, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I go deep, I go an inch deep every time. Yeah. They don't look shallow. like, you, you don't look like you have any, any oil in your arms at all. That's yeah, that's good. But I've been, I've been real mild with it and I had shit arms until I started doing that a couple of years ago um when i started working with blue and i mean they haven't gotten all gross and mushy so mm -hmm. there's a big difference in your arms from usa's to now yeah I mean, from usa's to the new york they got a bit better but from new york to like now it's it's been significant i think that's yeah. i i used a bit of seo in my off season last year as well not just this year and my arms grew a bit more, but not quite as much as they have this year. And I think it's just mm -hmm. down to the arm day that I added in. I think that's this the is, biggest thing. This is why people like Stu, because the honesty, right? Like, people would, will admit to everything, gear and slin. And, but when it comes to, like, side injections, people, all of a sudden, nobody wants to admit it. Nobody does it, right? It's but so, we it's all so know. weird, because, like, like, you'll put fucking gear in your bicep, right? And same difference like it's oil right it just happens to have a drug in it so it makes it okay like shut the fuck up dude it's it's still oil, same thing you know? same thing yeah so but but now like what Stu said uh if if you're not already have a lot of muscle on your body do what zay said don't do any don't do any oil yeah. now if you already have a ton of muscle everywhere and for some reason you know you've already tried all the training styles all that like Stu has then that's that's the last step you know not because we're so morally high that we don't want you to do it just literally because it's not going to work if you have no muscle there. yeah if you stick in a needle an inch deep in your bicep and you have 16 inch arms it's going to hit your fucking bone like there's no meat there <laughs> that's going to be horrible you, you can't and, you, and you can't do it you know um yeah. and you know i've been used it you know, Austin's ebook doesn't specify that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you gotta, I, I won't you speak gotta, for Boston, but um, you got to make a new ebook, uh, Stu. Stu book. <laughs> I book. couldn't possibly. Stu uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I've used this for you know, kind of off and on, more more off than on for the last three years, and I haven't increased the volume that I do at any point. Uh, I started at one that's one and a half per muscle, you know, 
back in 2021 and I've just left it there. And I mean, it hasn't fucked up my arms. Like they don't look all weird. They've grown a lot, which is good, but eventually I want to stop doing it because like it, when you do this stuff properly and it like it stretches out the fascia in your arm, it allows for more blood flow and allows for more growth. That's the whole idea. Like Stay it's too. not just going to disappear when you stop shooting the oil in there. Like some of the water-based stuff, like um, which like Metaform, I don't have personal experience with that, but like um, it, it tends that's the stuff doesn't tend to stick around as much. Now, if you overdo the oil and you have literal fucking oil sitting in the muscle, you don't want that, first of all. But, like, eventually when that disperses, it will look smaller. So, like, that's the illusion of shrinking that you're seeing with some people. But I've never done enough to have that problem. So, um, you know, a year or two from now, I don't want to do this shit anymore. Like I said, I hate shooting my arms. But, you know, until I have, like, 23, 24-inch arms, like, I still kind of need to keep doing it a bit. Um, um uh metaform I, 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 I've done metaform and it's uh when you do it within like <laughs> within like two minutes that bit swells up like three inches bro Crazy. does it look blurry though like does it look inflamed and blurry like it does for like 10 minutes but then but then it doesn't after that okay so um uh, I've heard in Kuwait they they love the metaform in Kuwait and I can see how it could create that illusion, but th there's so many caveats. Like it has to work for your body. It, it, there's so many different caveats. Also, it depends how your muscle belly is shaped. Like I said, with the way my arms are shaped, shit just looks funky as hell, bro. Yeah, it just looks funky as hell. For you, being that your arms look great with the, even though you don't put much metaform for you, probably would look pretty, pretty, pretty bubbly. You know, the first time I did it. I did it and put a t-shirt on. So I didn't know what was going on. And I got to the gym. I took off the t-shirt to train arms. I look like fucking baby Valentino in that bitch, bro. <laughs> My shit. I was walking around like this, bro. I'm like, nah, bro, there's no way. And I feel like people saw, but they didn't want to say anything. They're like, what the fuck is going on with his arms, you know? Yeah, so I've, I've gotta... thought about trying. I've talked to Blue about it a few times. And he's just said, it's fucking garbage. You don't, don't touch it. And I don't know if like, Maybe Blue doesn't like the owner of the company or something like that. I don't. I have no idea. But he he doesn't have any of his guys use the the water based the hyaluronic acid stuff, and I've never tried it. The only place I'd be interested in maybe trying it is like right before a show, like a small yeah. amount to like you know really make your biceps or whatever peak or be full. But then like you know what if it makes them blurry and shitty looking? Then mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's gross. You don't want that. So. You got to, what you got to do is you got to do a trial run and get the timing right for your body. Mm -hmm. Like for me, like two days after it is the best look. So I, di I did that with my calves, even though I know you, you couldn't tell on stage. Hell no. But, but, oh. but, <laughs> but I tried it for my calves. Like, oh, my calves, I'm going to have calves on stage. And for some reason, uh, when I saw the pics, I still didn't have any calves. But, but granted... <laughs> <laughs> granted I, I didn't carb up i was over depleted i think i think if i was round and full i think i, I think i would have had some calves so um <laughs> calves so, don't so, matter guys please yeah, don't yeah. do that <laughs> don't no no don't do that <laughs> and just like like we're being honest but the truth is that bro y'all 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 people asking questions y'all don't need no oil uh, I, I promise you you don't need yeah, no oil this, in your body. like if if you're <laughs> If you're like close to winning a pro show and you need some arms on you or like close to winning a national show, and you need some arms, like maybe that would be a time to use that. But like, dude, if you're some gym bro or like you just want big arms, fuck right off, dude. You, you, you shouldn't do that. No, hell no. Damn, some of these questions are kind of aggressive. Um, that, That's some mean questions. I don't want to answer those with the bodybuilder recommending guy. <laughs> As a bodybuilder, you guys should get pedicures. You guys get pedicures? No. Nick does. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I I I do before a show. I should I should do it more often because my feet. Holy shit! But uh, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta uh, have them joints <laughs> taken care of, bro. Yes, smart man, smart man. Yeah. I definitely oh, think man. guys should get pedicures because yo, some of y'all feet, man. Holy shit. You get pedicures. Yeah, I, 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 I was in. 
<laughs> I said, I said for Rookie. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. No, I do not get that. <laughs> no. Like the Botox show no. for me. Nope. <laughs> just Botox for, for Sid. <laughs> I spent like I spent like half my life in cleats. So like I get just like like just rough feet, bro, and it's not cool. So I can't be <laughs> cuddling up with my lady and she like, yo, you got eagle claws down there. I'm like, God, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. I can't have it. She'd be clown she'll, she'll, she'll clown me. I can't have it. You know what I mean? I, can't no, have I cut my own roast in the middle of the night. Yeah, exactly. I think. No, 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 no. I get like mad, like calluses, like you're, you're, you're here. Oh, I, from, just from wearing cleats, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like just from wearing cleats for like, like since I was eight years old, I just got calluses. Bad. Where's so, Fox? Take care of your feet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, said, my psycho. Yeah. Oh, yeah are you uh, are you good on time? Because I know you got to pick up. Yeah, I'll stick around for a little bit. Yeah, and then I'll. Yeah, right, but we're good. Th this guy is really adamant about me checking out Rich Gaspari's lifting form. You guys ever watch it? I, I don't somebody know just uh, yeah. You know what? Uh, the show that we do with Dave every week. Ask Dave. Somebody <laughs> asked him specifically about Rich Gaspari and his lifting form, and I said because I was like, "Where is this all coming from?" So I guess somebody must have made a video, or somebody must have yeah. You, there's I think he's like uh, bro, and it's yeah, like really, that's really the one. It's well, like well, well, he's moving it like one inch off the fucking thing is fully loaded or some shit. I I've seen Rich train back in the days at least, and is the hammer that one? Is that one? I think no. I, I've seen yeah, Rich train back the in one. the days, and he wasn't. Oh, okay, I see. Like wait, uh, like wait, baby. Peanut? <laughs> okay. He definitely he definitely gets some traps in there though. Oh, he's doing rock pulls on the hammer. <laughs> uh, I got to be honest though, like Rich doesn't compete. If if this is fun for him and he's having a great time, yeah, it don't really matter. Yeah, I mean, he's he, I, I, like an old dude in the gym. There's guys, like yeah, in every gym. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, there's always that one guy doing the bouncing the incline. Uh, the way I, the way I look at it, as long as the you girl's don't get hurt, watching, it's the girl watching. That's why. As long as you don't get, oh, they, this could be a little dangerous though on on leg on hack squat because I know he's not about to get asked to grasp with this. Ooh, okay. Uh, I mean, if he throws on some knee wraps, he'll, he'll be all right. <laughs> Damn. But speaking of bands, he, he you know the, the, he might he might could, could throw on some bands on there. <laughs> that could that could help the knees out. <laughs> okay. Well, we we all love Rich here, so I, I don't want to. No, he's a he's a legend, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to make fun of his form, but no, I could see. Oh, he probably, but this is this looks like good weight. He probably, uh, let me see. Okay, let's see what you're gonna do with this one. Okay, okay. Oh, whoa, there we go, Rich. See, no, that's legit. He could do it. I guess it's just. I think some people just like to train with. Uh, let's say. Uh, you know, a short, <laughs> short and uh, short and range of motion. I guess you could call it. I bet the right. dude back in like the eighties at the Gold's Gym when he was around there. I bet there were so many people doing so much dumb shit. You know, like <laughs> terrible form, no range of motion, and they were still like freaks. You know, <laughs> still jacked. Have yeah. Have you ever watched what's that guy uh, Samir Banu train? He was like jumping and swinging and shit, but his physique was you know like you could be like, oh that's not how you train back. But Samir, till this day, probably has one of the best backs. You know, mm -hmm. if Samir stepped on st stage today, he would still probably have top three backs. You know, it would be like Derek Lunsford, Samir, <laughs> like li literally. <laughs> Samir's hilarious too. I fucking love yeah. it when you you guys get him on RX or like the recaps of the Olympia. He's all dressed up for the show. He's got the hat on and everything. <laughs> He's enthusiastic, you know. He's into yeah. it. You should see him like during the actual show, right? Like there have been a couple of Olympias where he's sitting like, you know, like a row behind me. So like literally after every individual presentation or, you know, call out, whatever, I'm like turning around. Like what do you think? Because he's literally just like, like he can't help himself. You know, like the fan at every game where it's like high fiving random strangers or whatever like that are just the guy <laughs> who needs to share. His, he's that guy at these shows or whatever. He's so full of energy. But yeah, no, uh, during the during the wrap up, you know, the Olympia or whatever, the final wrap ups. Um, my God, he is like just it, it, and you watch it because we will have like 
it'll start with like Dave, Chris Cito, and a couple of others, and then you know he'll join somebody else. Join, he always and comes he's in literally from the side. just walking around <laughs> like, like he was literally he won. It's the funniest <laughs> thing. Him and Milos this past Olympia are just like so animated or whatever is hilarious. <laughs> Milos does the same shit. He just like sticks himself into videos. He's like, yeah. <laughs> This is a good one. Oh, is it a good one? Uh, Let the council decide, baby. The, the <laughs> now, now it doesn't sound so good. But uh, does 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 a young Flex Wheeler, like before he got big, beat Chris Bumstead? Mm. Yeah, hands down. Yeah, I, I would see that. And like I ninety-two, that, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I would, I would say yes, looking at the physique, but his condition wasn't. No, nine, he said young. Nice. He said young. So ninety-three, mm-hmm. Arnold. When mm-hmm. he did he win that year? Or? Yeah, he did. Yeah, ninety-three Arnold. He was shredded, and he had giant arms. He hadn't started putting shit in him yet. It, like mm-hmm. he had bigger legs. He had bigger up everything. Like. And the arms, the arms. <laughs> he, he he had a he, he had a tiny a tiny waist with the same size. Well, probably not the same size arms, but the arms looked just as big as the did as biggest. And put it actually looked bigger in proportion. Yeah, his quads were crazy, <laughs> hamstrings were crazy, his glutes were in. Um, I don't believe he's as hard as Bumstead is, but let's be real, the hardest guy doesn't always win. Bumstead is winning because. He is the hardest guy, but he's also the biggest guy uh, structurally. Muscular, muscular wise, I think Ramon is probably more muscular, but structurally the biggest guy and hardest guy. Now, Flex comes to like physique. I mean, it, it's gonna it's gonna smoke Bumstead. Condition would be like a eight versus like a nine. That's not one. I don't think one point one point condition is gonna make him lose. Yeah. So I think we got to go Flex, man. I think. I mean, look at the fucking uh, arms and shoulders and back. And, I don't know, flex. Can I pull that up? Is there, can can I find that? Well, Let me see. If they're hitting pull that, pull that on that kneeling, twisting back shot. And yeah, hitting, the twisted back shot. That shit's nutty. I don't even I know. I get where jealous you're... every time I look at it. I'm like, ninety three. If, if you're like, if you're doing all the bodybuilding poses too, not just the four and classic, like yeah, yeah I think he kind of rinses him when he gets through all of those. Yeah, yeah. We don't even see those on Chris nowadays. I'm not saying they're bad, but like I don't even know. I like I like to give the new guys the benefit of the doubt because I feel like the new guys get shitted on all the time when it comes to '90s guys. But in some instances, it, it's it's true though. I mean, in some instances they just fucking had crazy ass fucking physiques as well. Can you guys see this? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. His, his glutes are in. I mean, that's insane. You know, his glutes are in. So, not that it's a glute contest, but he's in shape. L- look at the feather feather than his triceps. That's pretty pretty nutty. Is is this night? I don't think this is ninety three. Is it? And his like his lower back that year was crazy too. Like all his lat striations and if he always video, had that. But they got to be a video. Let me see if I can pull up a video. Uh, <laughs> fuck, I don't know. Can I ask something that might come off as a bit controversial? Like, I'm just looking at this picture, right? And this kind of goes back to the debate of the stage itself, the lighting, and the differences between the 90s versus today. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see some like these classic pictures, and it's always like black and kind of like with that. I don't know what the term is, but the kind of lighting where it's just like. It just hits dead on to the point where, like, every, you know, everything is just enhanced. Everything is just uh, embellished in a sense or whatever. Whereas today, yeah, look at that. I mean, that's just like, look at that. The lighting is freaking immaculate. Look at that in the background. Bro, he, he looks he looks insane, though. I'm not going to lie. No, this no. Of, quite... of, of, of course. Yeah, that mm-hmm. this is. Well, Stu, Stu said he wasn't shooting his arms yet. I don't know. But, no, either... no. He, dude, he just looked like that. That was the crazy thing. Yeah. Like. That looks incredible. Look at that. Look at oh, that's that shot. Oh, why are they showing Lee Lebrada? Hey, that's Hunter. Hey, Hunter. That's Hunter. Hey, what's that's up? Crazy. <laughs> Not expecting yes, that. Baby, baby Hunter. Listen, man. Oh, okay, but yeah, but back to said point. Yeah, does the light and, and video graininess make a difference? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think a lot of these times, 
we give them a lot of credit because of that. Can, can but Chris this video do that? can Chris do that? <laughs> no, because not in that <laughs> automatically. <laughs> but, but also, this video doesn't look grainy like some of these videos I've seen. No, it actually this is pretty. Yeah, did this actual video doesn't seem as flattering? Uh, like the Iron Man lights or like that English Grand Prix lights, those are like crazy flattering. But this actually doesn't look super f flattering. Yeah, because his physique just looks crazy. You know, I, I know exactly what Sid is getting at, though. That I think sometimes that's why we give them so much credit because the lighting and the, the graininess. But no, you yeah. know what? I don't even. I think I'm I'm saying it more so from a perspective of comparisons, right? I mean, like, like I don't want to take anything away from either generation. I'm just saying, like, I almost at times think it's an unfair comparison when you take all the variables into consideration. I do think that is one of them. Because yeah. again, to me, this this combination, this dynamic with the lighting, with the background, I definitely think that adds something. It adds a little bit more of that illusion. Mm -hmm. And whereas today, I don't know if you have exactly that. And yes, the cameras are a lot better today. They we pick have, up on every little thing. We have the opposite of that today. We've got strobe light rave backdrops <laughs> at the fucking Olympia and you can't see shit. Oh yeah, and smoke too. Pour some smoke out while we're trying to do our individual routines. Great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. You bring that up because there's a question um, that uh, hmm. maybe I should I, I should maybe rephrase the question for <laughs> for, for uh, let's 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 say this if 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 you owned if you <laughs> if you owned the Olympia. Uh, what would be something you would change? We 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 love Jake Wood, brother. So, kudos to you, Jake Wood. This is just a just a question, brother. <laughs> uh, let's start with uh Joe. Oh, you you want to stay away from this, Joe? Or you can get the go. <laughs> well, I, honestly, the only two things that are kind of talked about is uh, I wouldn't let the show go super late. Like you did for the open bodybuilders, and then the backdrop being different. That's it. Though. Yeah, that's all. That's those, really all I have. Though, though, there's some crucial points, Joe. But I like how Joe skimmed over that. Uh, let's go, let's, go. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, Sid. Since Sid isn't doing the the Cal Pro, the Cal, the Cal Pro. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, don't worry about that. No, I'm just saying. Uh, I, I, I said, Sid, uh, what what would you change? Uh, as far as I don't know, production or anything having to do with the Olympia, you know, it could be even qualification. No, yeah. Uh, so I, I actually liked that they got rid of the point system. I, I was, I never quite understood that because I thought what it did. And I'm not going to mention any names, you know, in particular, but I, I felt as if you had. And, and not just men's open class and a lot of the other divisions. You just had you had competitors that, again, if we're, if we're to look at the Olympia as the best of the best of the best, then we need to see the best of the best. And and unfortunately, fair or unfair, in my opinion, that should come down to if you won a pro show. Now, granted, not all pro shows are equal. You're going to have some pro shows that you know are going to have a stronger lineup, some that have a weaker lineup, some that have a smaller lineup. I understand all that, but Again, I think it's the it's the truest way to, ch to funnel in the best competitors on the planet, you know, onto the Olympia stage, which again should be a, a showcase of the best. Not all right, somebody that kind of you know really trudged their way through a number of shows and you know yeah. may have qualified by virtue of you know a, accumulating enough points, whereas somebody else may not have been able to compete as much. So. I think that's to me that that made a big difference. I know people are going to argue, well, that, that we're only talking about a difference of three to four competitors per division, or whatever the case be. But I think those are little things that kind of ensure you know, you're going to get the best show. Beyond that, I mean, look, obviously, um, we've had the debate about the timings and you know should the show maybe go from two to three days to accommodate the classes, but in a manner where men's open isn't going on as I, again i think these are things that are worth because the olympia you know look if we're looking at it from a truly pure bodybuilding perspective obviously then yes you're going to want the men to go very early on but we have to balance that with this is the big weekend it is the big showcase it is 
showcasing all the divisions, but it is doing so in a manner where you are trying to incorporate that rock star element, right? I mean, if we're to look at, you know, the Olympia as that one weekend, that one celebration for the best of the best of the sport, a celebration for the bodybuilding sport as a general and whole as a whole, you do have to leave some room to accommodate for that element, for the production element. Now, again, there are going to be ways that we're going to have to, you know, have a conversation as far as, all right, what works best? How do you marry the best of this is, you know, a celebration of the rock star aspect of the competitors, but also in a manner where we are getting the best of the best and presenting them in the best of the best manner. Mm-hmm. So again, I think these are all working, but I think the biggest thing and it already happened, I, I would have said otherwise is to get rid of the point system to make sure you're getting the best of the best on that stage. Because again, from, from my perspective as a media member, as mm-hmm. you know, I guess someone who, uh, it looks at the storylines. You do want to preserve a, a modicum of, you know, the Olympia should be breaking down the best bodybuilders, not well. Okay, they happen to be on the stage, but really, what are you going to say about them? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Go valid points. Let's go, uh, Zaid. Mm, if I own the Olympia, no, no um, more Hadi, right? If you own the Olympia, Hadi doesn't. How do you no, I'll still give him a chance. Actually, <laughs> yeah. no, I'll increase the prize money for the open. I'll make it a million bucks. These guys deserve more money, and I uh, I will make top ten requalify uh, for the next year. I think top t- top ten in the world. That's a big deal, and top in 10? my books, top ten. Yeah, do Back not do, day, do, do not sell the Olympia like to the Zay. I think. Huh? <laughs> don't don't sell the Olympia to Zayd. We gonna have the no, top ten. No, why not, man? Why not? Yeah. And I'll make prejudging early in the afternoon on Friday morning. I would have it only black drop, like Joe said. No lasers, no smoke, just pure uh, black drop, and it will be the most fair, you know. And uh, I'll put the classic physique guys back in the expo now on the main stage. Yeah. Z- Z- Zayd is a menace. Zayd is I am liking what I'm doing. <laughs> I like this. Z- no, this gonna... is my opinion, honestly. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Zayd, can I ask you something? Wrong. Okay, can I ask you something? Because I, I, I'm I'm glad you brought this. Is a va- this is a very valid debate, right? In a sense where, look, there are there are questions whether or not Bumstead is going to compete this year he hasn't committed to mm-hmm. competing this year like he's 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 him and his wife courtney they're gonna have a kid um you know that that re- that specter of retirement has been floating around for quite some i'm let's just assume that he does compete okay there's gonna be a day whether it be this year next year two years three years down the road that he's not going to compete anymore obviously then you look at the next two best you know uh ramon and urs and i'm sure somebody else will come out through the woodwork Without Bumstead, do you think this division shares the popularity that it shares right now? Is that a question for me? So. Yeah, yeah, for Zay, just only. Uh, I think, uh, I think, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Like the bod- uh, open bodybuilding is way more popular, and I, I think if you separate both, I don't think it would hinder any audience that would come to just see and take a look at the freaks and see the best in the world. So. I don't think but, it would affect it if you take it out. What about what about Bumstead in particular, though? Yeah, like, no, Bumstead... no. I'm saying because, like, yeah, right now, look, uh, I think Bumstead's presence alone uh, is the big draw for classic physique. To I'm not saying, look, I'm not saying they're going to take them away from the main stage, but I'm saying the in general, the popularity the classic physique enjoys right now. Let's be very real; it is because of Bumstead and what he represents. If you take Bumps, if he retires, I'm not saying this year, but whatever, next couple of years, three years, will Classic Physique still have that same level of popularity that it has today and especially on Olympia weekend? I think it would because there's a tons of new stars on the rise. I think mm. so. Yeah, he, it doesn't end after him. Let's just put it that way. And we've seen many stars who are legends come and go and the sport is still just fine without them. And this this applies to open bodybuilding as well, not just for classic physique. Yeah, but you know, certain certain uh, like top athletes like him will all forever have a have fans. You know what I mean? No, even if he's retired, he will still have a lot of fans. 
So, but going forward, I don't think the sport would be any any less exciting without him because there's tons of new talent on the rise. You know, Kelsey wasn't funny. that big to start though until he started winning, right? N no, it, it wasn't, but it, it was also brand new, bro. It, it also just started. Uh, I was actually about to disagree. I was gonna say no. I definitely think it would take a huge hit without Bumstead, but the way Zayd put it, it makes sense because. We say that about every sport. We're like, yo, once Kobe retires and Iverson retires, Mar all these guys retire, that's it. The NBA won't be the same. We said that when Jordan, but once Bird and Magic and Jordan retire, nobody, we keep saying this, but then every time we say this, a new crop of guys come in, right? They said, oh, when Phil and Kai are gone and Rody, that's it, we're over. But then every time we say this, a new crop of guys come in and literally just fill the gap. It's it just makes like, it interesting again. It's like... It, Classic Boom. is not interesting to me right now because, like, the guy's got a lock on it as long as he's competing. Um, they do the two man call out for the sake of it. Like, we know who's going to win that shit. Uh, and then, I mean, judging in the classic division is confusing to me. Uh, I mean, like, third place looks as good as ninth place sometimes, but because just because 20th, so 20th. Many, cause yeah. there's so many fucking guys, right? But yeah. it's, it's going to take, like, Someone's going to have to fill those shoes, right? And it's going to have to be a pretty remarkable yeah. individual, right? Physique. And I don't know if Ramon has that. Ramon's super good, but there's nothing like we've talked about. It, like, he'd look good as an open bodybuilder with 30 more pounds on him, you know? That's not really classic to me, but he's still placing second. I don't, I, I don't think it's going to be a one-man job like Chris I think it's gonna be like no. look at all all this talent, you know. I don't think it's gonna be like wow, Ramon is carrying this sport. Like Bump said, I think it's gonna be like well, look at Ramon. Well, look at Urs. Look at uh, maybe in a couple of years that Antoine Swole guy, right? Look at uh, what's the guy with the uh, vintage genetics? Uh, look Wesley. at uh, Terrence. Wesley. Yeah, Wesley, look at Wesley. Yeah. Look at Terrence. And there's so many guys coming in. I think I don't think it's gonna be like oh. Well, well, I do think Ramon is going to yeah. win uh, uh, quite a few times, but I don't think it's going to be all on the shoulders of Ramon like it is Bumstead. I think just Bumstead has been the the only only the, the really popular guy since the inception, so he, he's all we know. So it's hard for us to see anything outside of him. But when he's gone, I think everybody's just going to further. It's going to be more competitive. It's not going to be one two everybody else. I think Ramon is going to have a lead, and then everybody else is going to be really close. Like you said, three to ninth is pretty close. Fucking uh, tenth to twentieth is close as fuck. Twentieth to thirtieth, uh, some of my friends are are in that range, and I'm looking at them in person. Like, how is anybody going to beat this? And lo and behold, they don't even get second call out. Right, so they all look so good that I think they're going to carry each other more so than resting on Bumstead's shoulders. You know, what I'm saying? see, I was I was bringing it up from yeah. not from like the competition aspect, really the the, the popularity aspect, right? Because I mean, because yeah. if we look at the compared. Uh, Urs and Ramon. Urs, I have no idea how popular bodybuilding or classic physique is in Germany or in Europe in general, right? Whereas we know Ramon is worshipped in Brazil. Ramon, in Brazil yeah. Ramon gets off the plane in Brazil and is mobbed immediately. I mean, look, if you post Stu, go post anything about Ramon right now and see how many Brazilian <laughs> fans you're going to have in your comments. There's a dinosaurs. They're, they're, <laughs> exactly crazy about Ramon and the crazy about bodybuilding in general, but I'm just, I'm just again I'm I'm floating this out there just because it's it's something to think about like you know like we because when classic physics started right we talked about how popular it would get right because you have a lot of bodybuilders coming out of the woodwork from other divisions and it's this new exciting division forming that was great you know and obviously it's, it's evolved to the point that it was it's evolved. Bumstead is, he's the monolith. He's the standalone figure. Let's be very real, obviously, for the titles that he's won, for the global popularity that he's amassed. Look, I just did a, uh, at the Dubai Muscle Show just a couple of months ago, uh, I hosted this uh, Q&A with him. It was a ticketed event or whatever. And so let me put it to you this way. There are, you could be a fan of somebody, but to Bumstead's fans, right? And I'm not just saying this is like from a bodybuilding perspective. I'm even saying from like a life perspective. There are fans of Bumstead that see him the same way as like fans saw Michael Jackson back in the day. Mm -hmm. They're crazy yeah. about him. Like, yo, 70% of the questions that people would raise their hand, they would get the microphone. 70% of the questions started with, 
I, I'm really nervous right now. My knees are a little shaky right now. These yeah. people, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if the next level down has that kind of popularity. Do you see what I'm saying? No, like, I think Bumstead has elevated yeah. his class in a popularity perspective that For I sure. don't know if the other guys are going to have, maybe aside from Ramon, as the Brazilian fans are concerned. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you see, like, as he grew, like, the popularity of the class grew, people yes. were copying his style, you know I mean? Wearing the mullets, wearing the mustaches, wearing the the, the Nikes with the high socks, the shorts, the shirts. So, okay. like, he, he himself, like, became, like, this, you know, like, obviously, like, this icon, and he is, and like I said, I, I agree with, it was said, like, Ramon is such um, a popular, like, person within Brazil, and he is growing globally, but man, like, it, it, Chris is definitely another level, right? So, well, I think it, I don't think it will fall off. Like class physique will fall off if he no, steps yeah. down, but it'll take it'll take a small hit, and then I think that's when it'll take this transition time to be like what Beatty said. Like people will start to, you know, collect collectively get a, gather around. Like okay, these are the top three guys, and they're all popular, you know, and they're mm -hmm. all bringing the sport along. Um, so I think it'll get there eventually. But um, yeah, I think it'll take a very like it'll take a hit. It'll it'll take mm -hmm. a small hit, but. He's the people that he's drawn into the sport, they'll stay in the sport. Boom. And you know, what I mean, then people will start following along. See, so it'll keep going. That that that's a point I want to make. The 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 way he shifted the younger guys' culture, or like the culture towards classic, I think I don't think that that goes anywhere. I think he he stops competing. The, what he did to the classic physique uh category still stays there, right? He he brought it to like the forefront where that nowadays people are growing up. They don't. They want to be classic more than they want to be bodybuilders. With him gone, he's not actually gone. He's just not competing. But that impact he had is still there, at least for the next. I don't know. At least another ten years, probably longer, right? So by the time that ten years passes, uh, hopefully by then, some other people have, have already stepped up and 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 bought in uh, another demographic, right? So it's not like Chris Chris retires next year and all of a sudden all the people he looked up to are like ah. I don't care about classic anymore. They're they're already invested, I think, in classic at this point. So I think that's going to continue. But uh, I think Stu is going to fall asleep if, if we keep talking about classic. <laughs> so <that's, laughs> well, where did this question start? We were like, what changes? Uh, oh, yeah, the changes. Yeah, yeah. If uh, you let's bought go back the Olympia, that. but yeah, like I mean, <laughs> there's there's like a clear tension between what's good for making a a flashy production and making money and pulling people to the show and what's good for the athletes and by athletes i mean open bodybuilders because like that's who i care about and like clearly the decision making is shifted towards like the money making production side of this this table you know like if you you would not have bodybuilders going on last at 11 p.m if you gave a shit about them uh you know it, it's it, it's it's just you Never have do. to no this is just this is truth like if you <laughs> you need to if they wanted to prioritize the bodybuilders and treat them the best that they could um then they wouldn't run things like they do they wouldn't do the flashy backdrops they wouldn't you know drag the show out with 17 fucking different classes before we got on stage uh, it's um it is what it is you know i don't anticipate that will change because there's too much money invested and too much money to be made by having all those other divisions. Cause like, I think we've talked about this before. If you had bodybuilders go on first, the fucking stands would be like a third full <laughs> by the next class. Once we were done with at prejudging, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, and you know, sp spread it out over two days so you can sell more tickets. It, it all makes sense. If your goal is to make money out of the weekend, and you know fine um you know so that i don't see that changing i think maybe you could because like w when they have w when they have like the guys at the olympia like they have the press conference they have the meet the olympians thing they have a lot of obligations that you have to go and do as an athlete there i don't know if anybody's getting paid for that like like you're <laughs> you're asking me to come and shake hands and shit you know, a day before the biggest show of my life uh, and like, you know, just smile and wave and stuff. And I'm not, do, I, do you, any of you guys know? 
do you get compensated for that? I could ask, I guess, but um, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. You can sell like uh, your own, own your own merch and stuff while you're there. You know, t-shirts and stuff. Maybe a couple t-shirts while you're there. Maybe you know. Yeah, yeah. So, right. so some like uh, if, if you're if you're required to be there, <laughs> they are buying your yeah, time, man. and they should compensate you. You know. Like the fact that you're even there, you should probably be getting paid because you are the critical part of this whole production. If you weren't there, then it wouldn't really happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't. I don't really know if that's the case. I know that they will pay for some room and board and travel expenses. I think they give you like two or three nights of a hotel stay uh, for like one hotel room and like travel for for yourself, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it's anything more than that. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, yeah. Uh, do I think anything will change? No, because I think I think enough people have have, have talked about this. I know Arx Muscle. I know Dave is very vocal about that, as he should be. So, which somehow respect because Dave is really in the industry, and him talking about that could could have people maybe like you know Jake might not like that. But it's it's. But, it's, but it's can still... I can I be very honest with you? Um, and, and to Jake and Dan Solomon's credit, um, look, previous regimes, if you spoke at all yeah. critically about the Olympia, your band, yeah. your this, your that, they allow for this conversation to take good, place. Good. And not oh. only that, but they good. will actively engage you <laughs> in that conversation. I mean, look, it's again, you have to have, you know, understanding that, um, yes, this is a show that the entire bodybuilding community, whether you're a top level olympian whether you're just literally a fan starting whatever you all are invested in this so i i do give them credit the sense that like they're willing to have that conversation and they're willing to mm-hmm. look you're able to have this conversation and you know they're not going to come down on you for having an opinion that you know it's yeah. contrary to theirs in a sense so as of right now i'm a meathead right we're all meatheads and uh meatheads don't own the olympia because meatheads can't afford the olympia you know who does afford the olympia businessmen people who know how to make money so businessmen own olympias so if a businessman had olympia you, you you would only own it if you were a businessman so now now I, I would have to put my businessman hat on right you have to make money so you know it's, it's, it's dope to do everything for the athletes but you have to make money or this doesn't work it, it'll never work if you're losing money yeah you know, but this is this fucking like trump change dude giving mm-hmm. the guys a couple of grand to come to the show like that's chump change mm-hmm. in this whole equation. When you have uh, prize mm-hmm. money of like what four hundred fifty thousand dollars, yeah. especially even you got venue cost to to rent out. Like there, mm-hmm. there's a lot. There are big numbers here. Okay. Yeah. So I don't buy I the don't... fact that oh, we mm-hmm. won't be able to break even if you know mm-hmm. we don't if we give you another night's hotel stay. Like, yeah. No. No. I don't. I don't know the logistics, so I can't comment on that in in particular. But let's say I, I did own, own the Olympia. The only way, like I said, the only way I would own it is if I was a businessman. So I have to put business first to a point. Now, that being said, I feel like if the athletes aren't able to bring their best, that's not a good investment neither. So that's where the balance has to be. As things stands, they, they can't. The huh? way that the schedule is no, laid out, like, they, they can't. They yeah. can't. So, so that's where the balance in that coming in. It's not going to be as easy as some of us make it sound like. I'll just come in and change everything because you start doing the logistics and you realize why some of the things can't be changed. But a lot of things can be changed. You know, like Stu said, I'm sure there's money to be made and there's money to be spent. You know, where is this money going to come from? I'm not a businessman, but I'm sure a businessman could figure that out. You know what I'm saying? And Jake is a very smart man. And anybody who's gonna gonna own the Olympia are very smart people. So and, uh you know, we like to talk about how it's the best athlete athletes in the world in the sport, mm-hmm. and it is. Like, mm-hmm. y- do you treat the best in the world at anything like uh just figure it out yourself in any other sport? Like yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> like yeah. you should be <laughs> fucking having your hand held through the whole thing. I'm not asking for that, but like that's how it is in every other serious you know, yeah. organization. Yeah. It's not like, imagine if like a Super Bowl went on at 11 p.m. at night, right? It's yeah. Like, damn. Exactly. Like, they're going exactly. to dog tired. <laughs> so, so, pretty sure, uh, let, the, pretty sure we won't have the best game. Let's say it's a pendulum, right? And a pendulum here, here, this side is business, this side is athletes. Right now, it's like here. <laughs> We're going to have to try to bring it like here. 
Because I get it. I'm not going to say bring it here because you're still a businessman. So if we could get some middle ground, you know what I'm saying? So let's say very least, right? It costs zero money, probably less money to turn off the fucking screens and strobe lights. That that doesn't cost a thing. Yeah. So we can start with that. You know? Who's so it's paying like, attention to that when they're watching open bodybuilders? Like, I don't need to see Redcon 1 in the background while I'm watching Hunter Labrada pose. Like, yeah, that, that, that's that. my thing. And, and it's not even like it's just sponsors up because back in the days with the black curtains, they would have sponsors up, but it was still, still uh, posters. It wasn't flashing and stuff like that. So now if every bodybuilder, every media person, a anybody with a voice is saying, get rid of that for the last three years. They said they were going to last year and then they didn't. Like, what happened? So just turn the lights so, off. <laughs> so exactly. So so what's stopping that? Are you gonna say, well, the sponsors, the sponsors can still be up there, have them out at, at the sides of the screens and just still writing, not flashing and dancing around, right? I think that's a simple fix. So if you don't change that now, it, it starts to sounding like maybe you're just hard headed because everybody's telling you that they don't want that. Everybody, you know, saying so everybody can't be wrong and you're right. You know what I'm saying? So that that's something that doesn't cost a dime. So th that for me is the most important thing. The at the athletes as far as that. Now the timing, you won't lose any money by switching the time. I get why you don't want empty seats. That I that I can understand. So uh what we can do is maybe have the bodybuilders be judged earlier, but still come out later on for like their posing, right? Because individuals with posing, you don't do they judge that technically? I don't they don't know. judge the posing technically, but you're right. Like if you're selling a night session ticket with, I forget the order, but like if you have open bodybuilder pre-judging, bikini finals, wellness finals, uh, you know, say the three or four classes, right? You put the mm -hmm. bodybuilders first, even if three quarters of the people are there to see the bodybuilders and they all leave when the other classes get on, you still sold the tickets like you made yeah, the yeah. same amount of money, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. So putting them at the end is like you're not actually. Again, the optics of having a bunch of empty seats is is what Boom. it is, right? Yeah. And they don't like that. But I mean, if you're watching the live stream at home, just don't show the fucking audience. Nobody will know except it, for the people exactly. There. So, so I feel like when it comes to that, like there's a difference between business and I don't know if you would call it ego or how how you're perceived, right? From a business perspective, making money, it doesn't affect you to have the bodybuilders come on earlier. Now, you, maybe you don't want Shaq and Batista looking around like, oh, why is it empty in here when the bikini goes on? With all due respect, Shaq and Batista isn't isn't the concern. The athletes have to come be before Shaq and Batista. So I, 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 they, I, they would stick around, dude. Like, you know, people like hot chicks, that's cool, right? But, I mean, you know, you pay for an Olympia ticket. That's a lot of money. You may as well stay. Mm -hmm. Well, you're I would if I pay yeah. that much money. I, I'm staying. If I go to a local show, I don't stay. But the Olympia, I uh, I would want to see the Olympian right. athletes. Of I would I, I want to see classic, uh, even men's physique. I mean, uh, yeah. it's I, interesting. I, I, I feel like they they put on a good show this year because we're talking about Olympia. We're talking about the best in the world. Yeah. I think they all look so good that, like you said, if I pay that ticket, I'm I'm probably gonna sit there the whole the whole time. So I think those are changes you can make that you don't lose any money. So if, like I said, I got to put my business hat on, you don't lose any money doing that. I'm all for it. That's just a matter of listening and trying to be better. So, and we I might mean, be I, talking I, out I of our asses, this. right? We're not looking at the spreadsheets that are like no, totaling yeah. up these costs and all this stuff, but like some transparency would be great so that we could actually understand this issue because it Why? does affect athletes and, you know, it also affects fans because like, if the fucking show is, you know, not starting until 11, 11 p.m. and I want to watch the open bodybuilders, I got work tomorrow. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can stay up until 11 o'clock, 1 in the morning. Where, where it's you ridiculous. Uh, Carlo, do you, you got any more to, any, anything more to add? No, I think you guys hit the, hit the nail on the head with it, you know? Like, I mean, yeah. you, like you said, it, like the pendulum is, is one way if we can get it to swing. You know, not all the way to the, like the opposite direction, but somewhere in that middle ground will be perfect. And I mean, like honestly, you guys are bringing up really good points that I've, you know, that I, I haven't really heard too much of other people speak of. Like, of course, people raise concerns about it, but like, you know, providing like actual solutions and and possible routes to go is something that like should be heard and should be listened to. 
you know, mm-hmm. especially as like, you know, to a member, you know, of the IFBB. And I, I obviously, bro, like, I think you'll be in Olympia one day. So, as you know, I mean, you, you don't have to be going you through know, the like, this is, for sure. And yeah, if, and I, it, if we had to put up with this crap, it. it's going to suck. And you, once you're there, yeah. you can't say anything. You know, <laughs> like, you just got to thank mm-hmm. Jake Wood for putting on a great show and try to get there next year. So, yeah. Once y'all get there, I'm, I'm gonna have to just edit the whole podcast at, at that point. But <laughs> <laughs> but but I was gonna say, yeah. What 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 I always like, I take pride in 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 being fair, right, and not having bias. So as a meat, even though I'm a meathead, I try to understand from a business perspective. That's why I'm, I'm not gonna say get get rid of the screens, put a black curtain, and pay pay every every winner a million dollars because I, yeah. I understand I understand that there's logistics. You can't just pay everybody everything they want because even if you can on paper, there's reasons why. Because you're thinking about what happens if like COVID, when COVID happened, when Jake, I'm sure had to come out of pocket for some shit. You don't want to do that shit. Yeah. But you have, but, but you have to be ready for that kind of shit. So we have to show him the same respect when he does, because no, no other owner would have would have had that COVID Olympia. Nobody would. would I mean, let's that. put it this way: had they not acted as fast as they did, you know, move it to Orlando in such a short you know, period of time, you would not have had an Olympia. I mean, Ooh, it, it's, mm-hmm. it, that, that would have been an in interrupted break in the history of bodybuilding right there. So oh, the way they pivoted, you know, that's something that, I mean, I think bodybuilding fans should be very uh, appreciative of in terms of what they were able yeah. to pull off, you know, mm-hmm. with the conditions that we were facing, uh, obviously so much uncertainty at that time, Vegas, the Vegas strip, you know, was in such a flux where you never knew if the, uh, the strip was going to shut down. And if the strip shut down, you have no show because you don't know how one strip's going to reopen. So obviously pivoting, going to Orlando, you know, and it all worked out. I mean, it was a great venue. I mean, we just did the third year of the Orlando. Cause I think, I think I, I could be wrong, but it was a three-year agreement. Those, those, those first two years, skip a year. And then you have the third year, which was this past mm-hmm. Olympia, whatever, uh, Turned out to be a great venue, very convenient. You know, <laughs> like I know everybody likes the Vegas experience and everything like that, but th- this Orlando experience was was very <laughs> convenient. It was a great venue, and everything all worked out nicely. Yeah, yeah I gotta I gotta put an asterisk next to the stuff I say too, because like again, like I said, I'm not looking at their books. Yeah, I don't, we don't know. I, I, but I I'd love to know because like some of these things are just like head head scratchers for us from the outside looking in. It seems like obvious fixes, like. Dude, just put us on earlier. Like, yeah, and yeah. we'll look better. We'll be able to play it better. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just don't know when when there's no transparency in their decision making, and these annoying things keep happening. You just kind of eventually assume, like, oh, they're just not listening. Because mm-hmm. um, that, what are you left to assume? They're not talking. Let's. To you. Let's get Jake on a podcast. Let's get Jake with on a podcast <laughs> and, and just grill him. You'd be like, hey, Jake, why why didn't I get a million dollars? You know, is Hottie ever going to win again, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's do maybe one more question, yeah. I think. I actually have, have another podcast later. Um, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to talk about because I ain't never done shit in bodybuilding. So I don't know what, <laughs> what, they, I don't know what the fuck they're going to ask me. How did it feel getting fourth place? I'm like, oh man, I worked my ass off. You know what I'm saying? I just dieted really hard. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna say, but okay, let's do who who was the best? who was the best bodybuilder to never win an Olympia title? Hmm. Let's go. Uh, let's start with Joe before he. Hurdles over. I have a fun little charger. <laughs> oh, um, let me think here. Stu, I would say Victor Martinez. Oh, I don't. I, I never really hear that one, but that that might have been the the worst decision, actually. I him think not winning. His physique should have definitely earned a, an Olympia title. Yeah. 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 Jay yeah, Jay Jay cool. said that year he he had bought he bought he bought the wrong rice or something he said it was like a bunch of sodium in the rice he he got like <laughs> I don't know what kind, rice. Rice. Really <laughs> what kind of rice what kind of what kind of rice with it yeah it was it was Lasix <laughs> instead of salt 
I mean, <laughs> Oops. I, it, 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 it sounded like it was like some kind of like not this brand, but let's say like Uncle Ben's rice, right? And they got a bunch of sodium and shit bullshit in it. And he yeah. said that was the only rice he was able to eat. Either I don't know if it was appetite or his stomach, but he ate that rice and then he held a bunch of water and he couldn't get rid of the water. So Victor had we Victor got Victor gotta be able to beat Jay on or Jay on Uncle Ben's, man. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> on Uncle Ben's. Come on, man. Give that give that give that man some some <laughs> some respect. And I know this, love. Little, this yeah. is a little question, but like me and you have talked about before, I think Phil should have got eight. I still think he, he should have got oh, eight. He should have be, should be Sean, you're saying? Uh, yeah, rest in peace. But I, I still like uh, mm -hmm. to beat somebody in every shot. And you tell me just it's his abs that were kind of off. I was like, yeah. you know what? Uh, I just, I, I'm i sorry. He deserved eight. Well, well he, 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 he lost the front double. He lost front double, front lat, and abs and thighs. That's three to five. And, and the other I, five, Arguably, you can say he's winning it by 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 a long shot, right? That's what I'm saying. Like I've mm -hmm. I've watched every video and everything. I've watched the Olympia itself, and I'm just sorry. He, he deserved eight, maybe yeah. not nine. I don't know, but for sure eight, hundred percent. I can see that. I, I, I can see that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so Victor and then and Phil needs another one. Yeah. Right, let's, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, let's go, Sid. I mean, if you're saying just say Dave best, Palumbo. just <laughs> Dave Palumbo, <laughs> there you go. If you're saying the best bodybuilder, um, who never won an Olympia versus, okay, you name a specific Olympia and say, well, he should have won. Like obviously, Victor stands out in that argument, but I, for me, it's a toss up between. Lavroni is the name that stands out for me. I, I just think, you know, when you when we go 30 years back and look at that period of bodybuilding, um, and somebody were to tell you that that bodybuilder, Kevin Lavroni, never won the first place of bodybuilding on planet Earth, you'd have to scratch your head. So mm -hmm. I, I, I would say Lavroni. We actually had him on the show, and um, you know, he gave a very eloquent response. I mean, you know, he's a very deep man, a very religious. You know, uh, he gave a very philosophical response, just you know, saying that like, look, just wasn't it, it wasn't meant to be for him to ever win an Olympian. He's kind of made peace with that fact, but I, I just think if you were to line up the best bodybuilders on the planet who have ever competed, done you know, in terms of the history of their competition, you know. Lavroni for me. Mm, I, I would have said Lavroni myself, but every time I turn him around and see his back, I don't think that's an Olympia winning back myself. That's the only argument I have with that. But everything else was beautiful. It's just his back was never up there for me. That's the yeah, that's the hard part because it's like, does in in what in what perspective could he beat Ronnie at that point? Right? It's like. Like you said, once they turn around, then he he right. have a chance against Ronnie. <clears throat> but I will, but I will say, in was it ninety two? Was that ninety two? Ninety two. That's rookie what I was saying. Year? Ninety two Helsinki, bro. That's my favorite look all time, bro. All time. Now that that right. back at that time and those legs at the time, I think that can be Dorian, man. I think that can be Dorian because he was shredded. I don't think we've ever seen Leroni that shredded before. And when you're that shredded, now it looks like his back is there. Because his back was thick. It just didn't have the detail later on in his career. Like, it was thick, right? Maybe he didn't have crazy whiff or detail. But at that Olympia, the detail was phenomenal. And his legs were huge. We don't know Kevin for his legs because he just stopped squatting or something like that. But I don't. I believe he, he stopped giving that kind of effort on his legs. But his legs were bigger than Dorian at, at that Olympia, right? So it's like, I think he could have won that Olympia. Uh, I, I think so. Yeah. And had he won that Olympia, how, Wait, how history would have been altered? Yeah. You know, the, uh, does he beat Ronnie? I still don't think he beats Ronnie. But Dorian, Dorian and Ronnie are two different beasts. I think yeah. I think he beats that Dorian that year. To beat Ronnie, man, that's a maybe 98 Ronnie. No, no, 98 Ronnie was crazy. I don't know. I don't think he beat, <laughs> beats Ronnie. 
No, nah, I don't think he beats Ronnie. All yeah. right. Uh, who's next? Uh, Zaid. Yeah. 97, Nasser or somebody. He should have won. Oh, that, oh, that one too. I forgot about That's that That's a good one. one. Just yeah. That's a really this. good one. Mm, wow. I think he won I that one for sure. I didn't. I didn't expect these it answers. Was because... for, it was a gift for Dorian. He had a tear by, torn bicep and tricep. I mean, and his waist was already a little wider at that. That was pretty wide at that point too. His look was off. It's not. Yeah. It's not fair that Phil can lose Olympia for having a hernia, but then somebody else could could have a bloated. No disrespect to Dorian. See, yeah, see, all. like, but but his all his shots were kind of like different, that's what I'm saying. But Phil's were all still really good. Like, just you know, one, just the abs. So Dorian's stomach was kind of not in the best control that year, and then he have a torn bicep, and he still win. But then Phil, God for God forbid, Phil is so perfect that he has that he has a hernia, and all of a sudden he he's he's shit now. Now he's all oh, get him out of here. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you you can be so good that you can't even get away with the 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 smallest and and fracture you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i'm not but, saying this had anything to do yeah. with the judging but i'm saying more of a court of public opinion look mm -hmm. at what you know phil had really taken on the mantle of of being the villain towards like the, the latter mm -hmm. part of his of his run right fans i mean look he didn't always have the warm and cuddliest relationship with the fans um you know, I think he again. He he took on that the, the dream killer, right? That was sort of the the moniker or whatever. Um, but now I think we look back at that era and we're like, holy crap! Phil really, truly was one of the best of all time, and we may not have appreciated what we had in front of us when he was still, you know, at the top of the game. And you're right. Like again, we're we're looking at something where uh, you're going to look at, again in the annals of history. Why did he lose his title? You know, uh, did he deserve to lose the title? I think that'd be a debate point. But yes, I do think in the grand scheme of things, when we look back at that era, his run, I think we will start to realize that we were witnessing greatness. Yet at that time, we couldn't wait for him to lose. I think that's fair. Yeah. That, that, that's usually how it goes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Ronnie, pe pe people were talking shit about Ronnie when he was winning. It wasn't like... Of course, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, look at his stomach. Look at... So... But but he still won, whereas Phil, unfortunately, Phil uh Phil Phil didn't didn't get that nod, you know. Let's go, uh, Carlos. Uh yeah, I'm a uh, dude. That'll forever be my favorite physique of Kevin Verona. It was the uh, 92 Helsinki like Olympia. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think that was like to me like when you ask like oh man like what would you want to look like I'm like I want to look like that bro like mm -hmm. my man had the good hair. The, the, the tan was perfect. Everything just looked like great. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to look like that. Uh, was he the biggest? You know, no, he wasn't. But like, he was shredded that year. Everything was perfectly proportioned and in balance. And um, I just think like that for me was like, I could have, I had him win in that one. And then, I mean, obviously, you know, it is what it is, you know, how, how history went with, with Dorian just blowing everyone out the water the next year. But um yeah, for me that was that was probably one of my uh my favorite physiques and I think he should have had that one. But and uh but I agree and I agree with Zay, like the ninety seven that what came to mind with uh Nasser that came to mind and then of course like the uh the uh the, the, the Olympia with Victor and, and Jay. Um and I think I think Phil just kinda of fell victim to the times, right? Like everyone was kinda of like on about the bu the bubble guts and the midsection that year. Like had it been like two thousand and four where people were kind of giving th that little Damn. bit of a wave. Pass. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's crazy. He was, well, he was so shredded, he might have been, bro. Yeah, he was, bro. That was, mm -hmm. that was sick. Bro, he was a rookie. What 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 rookie is getting second at the Olympia? What he type won of shit the is Nationals that? in ninety one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He won the the ninety. I think he won the ninety champions this year too, bro. Yeah, how 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 could a rookie almost beat Mister Olympia? That's insane, bro. Me personally, even though I like his bubbliness, like later on, this this is a better physique than he had at like his prime. You know, like maybe not in the gym in the tank top, but on stage, this boy, look at his chest rises. Like this, this translates to stage for any era. You know, for any era, this translates to stage. But just and imagine I, if like if he'd actually trained year round. 
Because I think it was, it was like 92 or 93 when he had that pec tear, and he was just yeah. like, it was not, scared yeah. of straight in the offseason. After this Olympia, yeah. he, Bro, tore his, he, tore his, uh, he tore his pec, he, man. He's not That's even flexing. Great. He's not even flexing his glute, and he has striated glutes. He's literally yeah. just sticking like, one leg back. Wasn't his back like the best ever? No, not the best ever, but like man, like it's that's a, that's just a that's, that's just a dope thing. physique, man. Like that's one of my favorites, bro. Like when you ask, like, oh man, like what could you look like? I had to pick that one. <laughs> that that's 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 stupid. See, like th- th- this is much bigger, but better better is the we getting a, a, a Papa Jones ad. Yeah. But uh, it's just targeted just advertising like. for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, o- although this was bigger, bigger isn't always better. He was doing what, what he felt he had to do because when you got when you going against against Ronnie, you wasn't gonna beat Ronnie small, but you're not gonna you're not gonna beat Ronnie big neither. So at that point, you kind of just <laughs> you kind of just trying to see what the fuck sticks at that point, you know. But I mean, this is pretty 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 crazy too. <laughs> I mean, he was yeah, never not in shape. Ninety two was just different, different, it was just ridiculous. I, I don't like the lighting here. The, the it looks too like shiny. I don't like that. I don't like the lighting, but you guys get the point. His back got thicker, but not more details. But I was gonna say, my most watched bodybuilding video of all time is Marilyn uh, Muscle Machine. I, I literally started listening to Creed after that. <laughs> I don't. I, 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 I don't listen to rock. But if, if like, Kevin Levoni, like you know what I'm saying? I I don't listen to rock. But if Kevin fucks with Creed, I, I literally through osmosis started fucking <laughs> listening to Creed. You know, like <laughs> that that that's how like influential uh, Kevin was. He's he's just different. It's, it's you know I don't know. I, I definitely I'm a huge fan of uh, Kevin. Uh, how about how about Stu? Stewart. Uh I gotta say either ninety seven uh Nosser or um uh Kai Green. I mean I am not I don't think that Kai necessarily deserved to beat Phil any of the years. Maybe in twenty fourteen, the last time he competed with him. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that was about as close as it got. But I mean, fuck man, he was so impressive. And Super the only good. again a, just like in the '90s, the only reason he never won is because we had like an all-time great sitting in the throne. So it's like, unfortunately, it's like they're the you know they're the difference between this. Like Victor should have actually won the Olympia, whereas some people have their physique is more than worthy more than worthy of Olympia, but they never actually won it because they were going against somebody that was just way too good. You know, so you, you have think, guys. Do you think if I would have done what Jay did, where pretty much. Jay was always that good or really good to win it, but not good enough to beat a superstar like Ronnie until Ronnie started deteriorating. Because yes. Jay mentioned himself, like he never beat the best Ronnie. So you think if Kai would have kept going and yes. just said, fuck it, and then that Phil came in with that, that the stomach thing, they would have gave it to him? Yes, yeah, I, I do believe so. If you would have really stuck it good out. question. That's a real. That, that, I don't know if anyone's ever actually brought that up before. Like, this is a really good question because remember, 2015, we were expecting to see Kai compete, and that's when that you know I, I don't even know what the what happened. He didn't sign the contract or whatever it was. But video he of made him that, that car, yeah, he made yeah. that video of him crying. Right, that's what we remember. But like that was a, such an abrupt end that he goes from, and I'm not saying he would have beaten Phil in 2014, but it was still a great battle. That you, yeah, you're right. Yeah. As Phil, you know, may have started to have those issues, whatever, could he have been in position, pole position? Because we, we yeah. for sure, like, Sean's not going to beat Kai. He wouldn't have. Mm-hmm. No, so, no, he's not. He's not. There, there was, uh, when Brandon Curry won, Kai Green made a post on his page of him, like, dwarfing Brandon Curry, like a, like a young, small Brandon Curry. <laughs> yeah. And Kai that. is dwarfing I him. Remember. I remember. And then Bra- that. <laughs> and then and then, and then Brandon's wife commented. She was like, "You see, if you if you stick to your dreams and never give up and don't quit, you might actually win." And I was like, "Oh, yeah. clap, clap back!" But she's right. Be, don't, yeah. don't 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 try to dwarf Brandon. Be like, "Oh, see, I, I, I would have won." It's irrelevant what you would have done. 
Brandon stuck through it. If you stuck through it, you probably yeah. would have won too. So uh, it was it was disrespectful. You know, of posting course. that was is not cool. You, you don't do that. And, and Brandon is much bigger than he used to be. But it, it's irrelevant. Who the best one to show up wins. I don't like it when when people give Brandon a hard time because he showed up like you're supposed to. It doesn't matter who didn't show up. He showed up and he won. That's all that fucking matters, you know. So he got the Olympia and you don't, you know. That's how that's how the yeah. world goes. I think know? Kai was just fed up at that point, you know. I think so. Like think so. that's what I'm saying. Like Jay, I'm sure Jay was tired of fucking taking second. He's like, fuck it, I'm gonna keep going. It's not weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but Did I, I mean look look back at uh that period to what was it, twenty sixteen that Kai won the Arnold Classic? So he was mm -hmm. still yeah, he was still active. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was something that soured between him and the Olympia people at the time, but there was something there. So I, I but it is a something I, I think, you know, I don't know. Somebody gets him on for an interview. He, you know, Kai doesn't will never give you a straight answer. Like he speaks in like, you know, the, the Joker language or whatever. But like um it is an interesting case study. Like what happened? Why did he just cease to compete at the Olympia where he really was at the top of his game when in the Arnold Classic two years later could have been a factor for maybe two, three more Olympias, yet we'll never know. And then obviously, yeah. you know, 2018 happened. Hey, speaking of Kai, when are you guys going to stop making those stupid posts about him coming back? Is that, is that you or is it Dave? Fess up. <laughs> Say, somebody, like somebody have, in that game. We, we like to have some fun with that. No, with, with Ty, <laughs> yeah. no, what happened is this. That's what happened controlling. is this. <laughs> I mean, full of transparency, it's me. But like, but the point is, <laughs> oh, <laughs> because a few days before that, it was like at the turn of the year, I just posted a thing like your boldest bodybuilding prediction, right? Now, obviously, you're going to have the whole gamut of people like, you know, whatever their wildest predictions are. Kai literally just posts Kai Green competing for real this time. So of course, yeah, I'm gonna throw that out there. Have some fun with it or whatever. Because right? <laughs> he said it, yeah, yeah. Look, he said you know, it. with Kai, and I say this in all seriousness, you never know. Like the year is 2024. You never know what year all of a sudden he decides, like, screw it, I'm just gonna jump back on it. You you don't know. You, like, we we don't we if you see him train, the guy's still in shape. I'm not saying stayed shape. We will never know. We may not know. Who knows? Maybe we find out. The guy keeps himself in shape. And it's Kai. He's like the ultimate, like, puppet master, troll, whatever you want to call it. There could be a day. There could be a day all of a sudden he comes out of left field and is like, you're going to see him at this show. I don't know. Do classic. Uh, I've always said, I've always said, okay, you know what? I'll, 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 let's go revisit that one question about if you own the Olympia. I would have guest posers, right? Because we've had, um, you've had comebacks at the Olympia. You had the aforementioned Lavroni. You had Flex Wheeler. Um, why is there that, you know, instead of, all right, someone of that ilk or someone like a Kai green, who was a factor at the top for many years, instead of a comeback where, okay, look, even if Kai comes back, you don't figure he's going to be a factor at the Olympia. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's stating it nicely. Why not have him come back to a guest posing? I think that the fans would eat that up. I think it would be, you know, uh, you know, all sorts of intrigue as far as what's he going to look like. Have some fun with it. I think that's one thing I would add. A, a guest, well, like a high level, you know, one guest poser that you could sell that, you know, is relevant to the bodybuilding, you know, audience, or whatever, something that we would get excited for. I think I think that's the way that you get you get names like that to still come and we'll have some fun with it. You got you gotta be careful with the retired guest poses though. Um you remember when Ronnie retired and he kept guest posing? And slowly but surely people started saying, uh, Ronnie. I think you should sit this one out, Ronnie. You know, I think yeah. I, I think it's time to stop guest posing <laughs> because, because once you've seen somebody look so great, and then they're slowly starting to deteriorate. Sometimes it's yeah. tough. It's tough to watch. Actually, and so then, I, I'm sorry. I, before I forget, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but like no, last can't. year, it was last year. Kai Green guest posed in India at the Sharu Classic. And I remember, like Chris, Chris Aceto and Dave Palumbo were, you know, kind of at f first having fun with it. But the Chris Aceto was like breaking down. He's like, you know what? This guy looks better than some of the guys on the Olympic stage right now. 
So again, I'm not saying you're going to see Kai at the Olympia. But what I'm saying is someone like a Kai Green, would you not be, maybe not you guys necessarily, but I think for bodybuilding fans, it'd be cool. You have him, you know, come do some, you know, ceremonial guest posing or whatever. Just the routine. He puts on a show. He knows how to put on a show. Yeah. But again, going back to what Joe said, I think that's that's going to have to be one of those things where we look back and, 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 and do a deeper dive into what happened, right? That like you go from finishing second of the 2014 Olympia and then for whatever factors you decide not to compete in 2015. And maybe if you stuck with it, you could have been in prime position, be it 2016, be in 2017 to knock Phil off and never happened. Yeah, yeah. That's the uh let me share this real quick. Th- 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 this is kind of what what uh what what we don't want to see, you know. This was 2012. And at, at, at this point, it's like the truth is he actually looks really good, but once you've seen Ronnie Coleman at his prime, you almost don't want to see this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he I mean his legs are fucking big. He, he actually looks great, you know. So I don't know. Uh, we saw Jay kind of kind of do a guest posing, and that actually looked good. Uh, I kind of I, I didn't year, mind right? seeing that. Yeah, yeah. that was for yeah. his fiftieth birthday. Yeah, I didn't I didn't mind that, but sometimes uh, it can get uh, it can get uh, because Kai Kai almost looks the same in a hoodie, but I don't think without the hoodie he's gonna look quite the same. You know what I'm saying? So that's the that's the tough part. But uh, I don't think I don't think I, I did. I answer the question. Everybody else went. You did. It was Victor, uh, Victor Kai. I forgot. It was Victor Nasser. Kai. No, oh, Victor and Nasser LeBron. Kai Navroni. What did Stu say? Uh, Kai and Nasser. Okay. I think I'm gonna go. I think I gotta go flex. Flex Wheeler. Um, I don't think he actually won an Olympia, but a physique that crazy is kind of a shame that he didn't. But he he wasn't going to beat Dorian because he wasn't going to be shredded enough to beat Dorian, and he wasn't going to be shredded enough to beat Ronnie. So unfortunately, I don't think that was something that was in his cards. But I I thought he probably, in my eyes, probably had the best physique to never win an Olympia. I don't think he's the best bodybuilder to to never win an Olympia, but Physique standpoint, I think he has the best physique to never win Olympia. I would have to say that. Maybe the best physique ever if we're just talking about an actual physique. So many ups and like ups and downs and like asterisks in his career. Like he had that car crash. Yeah. And then yeah. Yeah. like there was that year he had to compete at the Olympia without any drugs, like because he was on probation or something, uh in like two thousand two or one, I think. Um, he said he said he would he was getting tests from his doctor though. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Milos made him confess that on the podcast. But that I mean that's you know the, he was pretty they much cut I mean, it. You know it's not gonna cut it. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna do much. Yeah, I'm not gonna, and he still looked he looked smaller, but he looked pretty good. You know, yeah, you know, he, he he's a guy who like they they did some test on him like and he had like a myostatin deficiency. You remember that? You like, did, yeah. So he's one of those guys who probably just grows whatever he does. Doing but anything. I don't know. Like, he never got as serious with it as, like, you know, Ronnie did. Because, like, Chad yeah. talks about how, like, you know, he'd coach him and he'd just expect him to cheat every three or four days. He'd factor mm-hmm. that into the plan with with his yeah. diet. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you guys want to yeah. do one more or you want to wrap it up there? I, don't want to wrap I actually I have eat. to dip. I gotta run. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, b- bounce then. Are, right, you guys, guys want to do one more, or, or are we good to go? Do the post podcast podcast. All right, let's do that. <laughs> All right, people. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Peace. Peace out.